Do you like heavy textured art that delights as it weirds you out and shocks you? Ever wondered what kind of webcomic Salvador Dali might make? Well, we have your next binge read with Tearcom. The comic follows the Drithers, a government contracted group of individuals with unnatural abilities tasked with the objective of keeping what is considered society functioning. Caricom is a Drither, but her true objective is fighting. Follow Caricom and her co workers as they complete nonsensical tasks and battle strange foes in a wasteland. Tearcom, a comic about animals and punching things. Read it now at tearcom.thecomicseries.com. That's T-I-R-K-O-M dot thecomicseries dot com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Supernatural Selection. I'm your host, Kevin the Bastard. With me is Mike the Skeptic. Mike, how are you this week? Are, are there actually... Are are they gentlemen and ladies? You sure? Sure. And other. Both of them? There's no, there's no telling what we've got. Ah, uh, well. I just want some empirical proof there. I have none. Oh, damn. Like it. every other topic I discuss on this show, I have no just empirical proof. Yep. But, so this is just Mike's way of asking for people to send pictures of their genitals to the email then, correct? I no. would like to discourage no. that <laughs> in the strongest possible sense. Also, with because us back... I, oh, sorry, Mike. I would Go have ahead. to say, as, as beautiful as a human body can be, sometimes the genitals are the worst part Yeah, to you look know, at. that's really true. And uh, back with us this week after his uh, trip to the musicals, Mr. David Davis. David, how are you doing, buddy? I am in free speech jail, and I am loving it. Oh, really? Are you? Mm -hmm. you, you Yes. You both tilted at those windmills this week, didn't you? Oh, boy. Let me tell (laughs) you. Yeah, I'm I'm off Twitter for about five more days because uh, I told Elon Musk to step on a Lego, and that is apparently hateful conduct. That I love that stepping on a Lego is more serious than stubbing your toe. I got ten hours. You got well, a week. Well, have you ever stepped on a Lego, sir? Um, yes. Yeah, that's that's pretty hardcore there. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Thug but, life. <clears throat> yeah. Thug life. Yeah, yeah. I I'm so proud of us, though. Seriously, mm-hmm. as uh, as a lot of fun. members of this society, we have definitely had our fun this week. So, so as someone that is not, you know, super jazzed about Elon Musk either, um, I will have to say that I this pretty much seems to be. I, I know other mm-hmm. people that have gotten mm-hmm. Twitter timeouts, right? For for other things, I think they're just stepping up enforcement of rule enforcement or if that makes sense <laughs> well, you know, here, here, here's the thing you would think that but i have been kicked off twitter for seven days meanwhile i've seen at least three accounts that have successively posted the n-word 17 times <laughs> so well, that's not but but see i every case that i've seen has been like you know not exactly wishing harm on someone, but even jokingly, you know, wishing harm on someone seems to be seems to Twitter the algorithm because it's not. Well, it's, this is not like people. This is all <laughs> algorithm. So well, well, I've seen I've seen someone threaten someone to like to rope them for like like actually like they they wanted to hang someone because of their religious affiliation, and I reported it, and it did not apparently violate the code of conduct. So. <laughs> Well, yeah. Oh my God. Um, I don't know yeah. what to say because like, yeah. I've seen other, like someone, one of my friends got a got a Twitter timeout for, uh, it was a picture he posted like three years ago that had text alluding to some form, something like that. It was really you know something like in the spirit of y'all, some very minor, 
inconvenience on someone. May you fall down face first with your hands in your pockets. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And, and you know, right. they, they got it yep. even though they had posted it so long ago. And it could be, you know, uh, just the Elon Troves are out there, you know, roving around looking for, you know, uh, slights to their Lord and Savior. Yeah. Here's a question. But, you know, all, all I want is I want him to see a fucking goblin someday. That way we can do an episode on him and I can just excoriate oh. him for 45 minutes. Oh, my God. That would be great. But also, I just want to say that um, I'm, I'm probably going to go on Twitter tomorrow and post, I hope I step on a Lego and see what happens. Well, yeah. You know, just say it. Is, is that technically self-abuse? I, yes. Everything I do is self-abuse in one form or another. Especially the way oh he my. eats Jesus. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, the things I do, it's terrible. <laughs> so, this week, we're going to be talking about Internet Snake Oil, right? Mm-hmm. I'm excited yes. about this. Mm-hmm. So, uh, should I go ahead and kick us off? Well, please do. we got a lot to cover, and uh, yeah. we're not Long. even going to get to do questions this time. Yeah. We Spoiler alert, this is an episode that I wrote, so it ends up being long. So, it's, <laughs> we got we have a long way to go and a short way to get there, short time to get yep. there. Something like yep. that. Okay. So, Kevin, Mike, mm-hmm. what do you know about snake oil salesmen? Well, um, they they generally sell oil for, that comes from snakes <laughs> out of the uh, trunk of their car over at the uh, Five and Dime. I was going to say mostly. I, I, uh, that's where I buy all my snake oil, though. So is they're it? great. Yeah. Do you use it in the truck? No, no. I, I use it to oil my snakes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's, it's not oil made from snakes. It's, it's made oil for, for snakes. snakes. Yeah, now, man. Dry them, snakes are a big problem. Oh, how else do man. you get that nice glisten on them? I did not know that. I feel so stupid because I just yeah. always picture flim flam men in films. Like uh, you know, squeezing a snake and just wringing it out. But uh, there was that time I found that bottle of snake oil cure at the flea market. And I bought it for a former friend of ours, and I wish I had kept it. Yeah. But it's basically cure-alls that cure nuns. Now, oh, now was like, it like, like an antique sisters? bottle, or was oh, it? Yeah, no, it was it was from the 1920s. Oh, wow. Ooh. Yeah, you uh, remember you I bought it? it? you son of a bitch. I bought it for, I will beep the name. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, no, should have kept that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so 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 it cures nuns, huh? Like, yep. was it cure them from like flying priests? Flying, uh, flying. Yeah, you know, that could be annoying if you don't want to fly. Yeah, no. It, you know, it cures them of, of their inhibitions if they're the nuns from Verdun. Ooh, sexy nunisms. Yes. So, yeah. Um. All right. So yeah, I mean, uh, there there is some snake squeezing involved. <laughs> snake squeezing. <And, laughs> There is some cure nunnery going on. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be working with the article A History of Snake Oil Salesmen by NPR reporter Lakshmi Gandhi for our framing of the idea of snake oil. Now, I'm going to ask something real quick uh, that I forgot to put down in here. Is Lakshmi Gandhi, was that formerly uh, Lakshmi Singh? That I don't know. I wouldn't or maybe be surprised. That, or I, or is I don't now know. Lakshmi Singh. Let me, let me look Ooh, up. good question. You read like, and I'll look up. Yeah, okay. You go ahead and start your thing. I'm just curious because I, I was a big fan of Lakshmi yeah. Singh's reporting. Yeah, no, I, I still hear her on uh, NPR. So, sure. Because um, I'm one of those assholes who listens to NPR on the radio. Speaking of yeah. the radio, by the way, nothing makes you feel more like a ghost than listening to a podcast that you're normally on and you're not on. <laughs> <laughs> and I just... it. it I, I missed you guys so much, and I kept oh, hearing spots dude. where I could talk, and I was like, I'm just, I, it's like I'm a ghost. We missed you too, buddy. It was it yeah. was fun, but like, if you had been there, it would have been that much more fun. So, yeah. I'm just well, glad you're you back know, now. I'm back, and I'm never leaving. You can't get rid of me. And you will now make us pay by having this super long episode. So let's get yep. to it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and quote the introduction from that article because I think it has an important tie to the topic we're discussing today. All right. So, snake oil salesman. The phrase conjures up images of seedy profiteers trying to exploit an unsuspecting public by selling it fake cures. In fact, the Oxford English Dictionary defines snake oil as, quote, a quack remedy or panacea. 
What the OED does not uh, does not note, however, is that the history of snake oil is linked to an often forgotten chapter of Asian American history. Oh boy! So, and that's going to be important based on the subject of our episodes. Oh so, yeah. Um. I'm going to go ahead and kind of give us this little summary of like how snake oil works, and then we'll get into like who we're actually talking about. So, okay. The term's origins come from the 1800s. With an influx of Chinese workers laboring on the Transcontinental Railroad, the Asian American population exploded with estimates of up to 180,000 Chinese immigrants in the U.S. between the 1850s and 1880s. And I, I feel it would be remiss if I didn't bring up the fact that the United States has a very problematic history with immigrants in general and those of Asian mm-hmm. origin in particular. Um, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, like, Let's not even talk about World War Two, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's uh, there's a really dark history here that we're going to be kind of like glossing over a little bit. Yeah, so, just know that it's there, and maybe someday we'll come back and do like a history thing about it. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. All right, to interject, <clears throat> different people. Mm-hmm. Oh. Singh and Gandhi are di- two different ladies. Okay, apparently okay. NPR just uh, friggin' attracts people named Lakshmi. Yeah. So, uh, along with these immigrants came their culture and medicine, and among that medicine was actual oil derived from snakes, specifically Chinese water snakes. Now, this oil is rich in omega-3 acids and can be used to fight inflammation. This was a general defense against muscle inflammation and joint soreness for many of the uh, Chinese railroad workers. That's very true, and I just need to know, is it too early for a watch out for snakes joke? (laughs) <laughs> yes. So, okay. um, so, did I do the weak and weird story about the uh, snake wine? Did I tell you about that? Snake? Mm. Yeah, where the guy yeah, got, bit got bit by, by the... Yes, yeah. yes, okay. you did. That just made me think of that. Yeah, I couldn't remember right. if I actually just thought mm-hmm. of putting it in there or actually talked about it. Or if I just had a dream about it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, good. <laughs> So, so the idea is that, like, inevitably, this oil would then be shared with the American workers of, like, different ethnic backgrounds, and that's where all this trouble starts. Oh, boy. You bring white so, Americans into you, it. You share your culture with white Americans, and they just mm-hmm. fuck it all up. Yeah. yeah. You, you bring your stuff over, what do you get? Panda Express. So, wow. so, so the effectiveness of such treatment would be an inspiration. I'm going to quote Gandhi's article again. Quote, as the world of healing power... As the word of healing powers of Chinese snake oil grew, many Americans wondered how they could make their own snake oil here in the United States. Because there were no Chinese water snakes handy in the American West, many healers began using rattlesnakes <laughs> to make their own version of snake oil. Uh... <laughs> Thus the inevitable, white people trying to do what other cultures are doing, but worse. Goddamn, I'm looking at you, Elvis. <laughs> oh my god. S- uh, seriously, though? Rattlesnakes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, enter Clark Stanley, or oh, the Rattlesnake King. <laughs> the former cowboy had oh, claimed boy. he learned about the healing power of rattlesnakes from Hopi medicine men. <sighs> Rather than attributing it to his skewed knowledge of the already existing inspiration of Chinese snake so, oil. So, not only is it Asian appropriation, it's also Native American I- appropriation. Appropriation. I swear to God, do not get me started on the quack garbage that gets blamed on Native Americans. Anytime my mom had a terrible medical idea, she'd say it was Choctaw, and the next thing I know, I'm getting an enema. <laughs> I mean, like, j- j- there was one time, like, I, my arm got burned, and she's like, we need to put it in a fire, and I'm like, the hell you do? Jesus. Oh, like, That's man. a Choctaw remedy. I'm like, well, you know, there's a reason... We don't do that. (laughs) So, um, as a flim-flam man, he was quite the showman. Again, I am quoting Gandhi. Quote, Joe Schwartz, the director of McGill University's Office for Science and Society, described the scene in this 2008 article. Quote, Stanley reached into a sack, plucked out a snake, split it open, and plunged it into the boiling water. When the fat rose to the top, he skimmed it off and used it on the spot to create Stanley Snake Oil, a liniment that was immediately snapped up by the throng that had gathered to watch the spectacle. Jeez. Come one, come all, the Stanley's Animal Cruelty Exhibit, snakes, dogs, and possums murdered while you wait. 
We pound dogs to a pulp. <laughs> Jesus, come, come get your cat flapjacks. What the fuck, man? This is terrible. Makes a great frisbee. Oh my Howls god! As you throw it. <laughs> it's. I can picture this guy today. He's the kind of guy that would take his cat and turn it into a drone. <laughs> but, but. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> what you have, Mike? Come on, man, but, bring it. But nowadays, if uh, if you're in public and trying to sell off your uh, snake squeezins, they arrest you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're actually about to get into that, aren't we? Well, <laughs> yeah. Your snake squeezins. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Ask, I, I've seen those videos too. Ask me how I know. Uh, no. <laughs> Ask me about my rap sheet. I'm not asking you about your rap sheet, your be your hip hop sheet, or anything. <laughs> but so, I got, I got, I got the the dulcet tones and the mad fat flow. Yeah, but it, how sick are Snake your fat? rhymes? <laughs> yes. Snake fat flow. Yes. <laughs> that, that no, that was my rap name, Snake Fat. Snake Fat. <laughs> wow, you were the shittiest <laughs> member of the Fat Boys. <laughs> no, no. So. No, it was a tribe called Quest. <laughs> oh god. Damn it! Oh god. Uh, all right. So <laughs> it turns out, however, that his product did not have any legitimate snake oil at all. I'm shock. astounded. I, I know. I just pulled the biggest shock. You know. Oh no! Shock face ever. <laughs> right. So the Pure Food and Drug Act of 1906 which would be one of the steps towards forming the FDA, one of America's best ideas gone terribly wrong, <laughs> sought, sought to expose and remove fraud medications. A 1917 investigation revealed the main, the main ingredients in Stanley snake oil were, quote, mineral oil, a fatty oil believed to be beef fat, red pepper, and turpentine. Well, yeah, you know how many freaking rattlesnakes you'd have to cut open and you know cat or just catch yeah. and you know process i mean you eventually i'm sure probably at first like the first couple of bottles were actual snake oil he's like this this is untenable i can't sit I here can't keep, yeah. I, yeah i'm getting bit every day i'm gonna die oh here's some mineral oil and beef fat that'll work well my favorite thing is turpentine because i can already see the logic he's looking at the bottle going eh, is it preservative I'm pretty sure it was just whatever he had in his, like, I guess he didn't have a shed. Whatever, <laughs> no, you, know. He, you know this motherfucker was in, like, a tinker wagon. Yeah, so he probably just went to the local general store, started looking around, like, okay, his arms bandaged up from all the snake bites. <laughs> he's, like, woozy so, so from the venom. you're saying he's a Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. He's woozy from the venom, just looking around, okay. Here's some, here's some, some, some uh, turpentine. Work. And some tallow. I need to sit down. <laughs> Shit. You know what would have solved this problem? What's that? One anaconda. Ooh, you know what? You're right. I, well, can't, I can't argue with that. But but his anaconda didn't want none. Because he didn't have <laughs> buns on. Because he couldn't on. afford the buns. Because <laughs> he was buying too much turpentine. Oh, no. uh, yeah. Nope. Nope. Can't inject your buns with so, turpentine. So, it doesn't so, work. So he was guilty of all this. What yeah, kind so, of stiff penalties did they levy on him? It had to be something incredibly severe, right? Like two hundred, three hundred dollars, a uh, thousand. Stanley was fined twenty dollars. God damn it! <laughs> Which he paid. <laughs> so at least he paid it. Um, yeah. And Americans began to start looking at false curatives and remedies as snake oil. So, so that began. The ridiculous, ridiculously low penalties for violation, violating the FDA's, at, uh, you know, yep. acts and everything. Yeah, even to Thanks, this FDA. day. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I mean, yep. I like what they do, but they need more like teeth, like fangs, maybe. Yeah. So, like, know, the, the FDA was fangs. a good idea, and then like it, it shit the bed. So yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that. So, so, so this uh, Asian American historical connection is important because today's primary subject is an Asian American con man, conspiracy theorist, and internet weirdo. What uh, today? There's weirdos on the internet? <laughs> yes, I, I've yes, never yes. met them before. Today, we will be talking about the wacky world of Alex Chu and his immortality devices. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Have either of you heard of this gentleman oh, before? Oh, I think Obviously. Mike has. I heard about him a little bit through you and Mike, but Mike, um, 
<laughs> Mike has strong memories. Yeah, so so uh, I, I spent an inordinate inordinate amount of time on the awful forums, and in the like pre probably right around two thousands two thousand one yeah around the was, uh, around the time really, the towers went down so yeah I really started you know pretty much right after nine eleven mm-hmm. being on the awful forums a lot. And pretty much right after, yeah. <laughs> right right after maybe o two o three, he like became came to prominence same time as Time Cube actually. Yeah, in fact, in such a way that if you remember from the Time Cube episode, Mike I, actually I, had them confused. I asked if uh, what was the Time Cube guy's name? Uh, I don't fucking remember. Yeah. I purged that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I asked if he was like a young Asian guy because. That that's Alex Chu I was thinking of because I remember going yeah. to both these websites because we're just you know the awful fascinated just riffing on them and just mining it for all the comedy gold they could mm-hmm. and so yes I am unfortunately I've it's all <laughs> lost to time but I do have a quivering little memory of Alex Chu that's like well my friend scared. I'm taking you down a trip. To you, memory lane. I think yes. I'm I'm gonna rephrase that as you're fucked me old beauty. <laughs> <laughs> so um one thing that we should probably talk about is that like snake oil is still very much a thing today. Oh well, yeah. Look at any supermarket shelf that has like the copper bracelets on it. As seen on TV merchandise. Well, so some as seen on TV is fine, but I'm talking you know, mostly the Yeah quote unquote remedies. Yeah. The the copper knee pads and elbow things and mm-hmm. bracelets and the healing power of copper. My mom, when she was diagnosed with cancer, I cannot tell you how many of those friggin' ca- uh copper bracelets she bought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How'd that work out for her? Uh she's dead. Okay, so we know that probably the it, copper did uh, not help. It in and fact it, did not work and she continued to look like a lich. No. So, um, flim flammery is still something that thrives in America. Yes, it and does. One could argue that for about four years it became a national identity. It did. This was pretty recently. Mm-hmm. So, such trickery in medicine has grown slippery in the recent 20 years or so as the FDA's effectiveness has been decimated by special interests, political maneuvering by oligarchs. Yes. That's a subject for a different sort of podcast, however. Yeah, I don't think that's within the scope of what we're doing unless they somehow manage to legalize chupacabra squeezins. Yeah, if you're interested in that sort of subject and just, like, the weird history of the FDA, I recommend Robert Evans's uh, Behind the Bastards. Great podcast, by Greatest the way. Greatest podcast on the internet. I'm sorry, uh, I, you know, we're, we're close, but... <laughs> well, you know, I, that and, like, uh, hardcore history, probably two yeah. of the best. Yeah. So, so this means that such fake medicines and alternative therapies have found their ways to weasel around the rules. Yes. So let, let's talk about one of those weasels. <laughs> what what do you two know about Doctor Mehmet Oz? Is is that the Doctor Phil asshole? Doctor Oz. <laughs> he could yeah. literally be the asshole of Doctor Phil. He, yes. Yeah, I I uh, just know that I don't like the man for his quackery. I, 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 al- I already didn't like him, and then COVID happened, and he started mm-hmm. like oh yeah diarrhea, literal diarrhea started coming out of his mouth. And so, like, oh, this I had is gonna no, be fun. I had this no respect so for him before, oh. and then that diarrhea oh. made me go, "Oh, you're really just a fuck nut, aren't you?" Yeah, fuck that guy. Mm-hmm. So the strange thing is, is that our likely future president, Doctor Mehmet Oz, God damn it, is no, David fuck still no. considered to be a rather brilliant surgeon, arguably one of the best around. So they said so, that about they said that about the guy that like the Doctor oh. of Death guy too. Well, they. they they said that about uh, what's his name, uh, Ben Carson. Wasn't mm-hmm. he like a really good doctor, but he was a shitty person every other way. He's dead. Yeah, now. he was He's a brain now. surgeon. That takes like mm-hmm. legitimate, yeah. le- but, legitimate skill to be a brain surgeon. But this, yep. but, but saying he was a brilliant surgeon reminds me. You know, have either of you seen Scrubs? Mm-hmm. Yes. Remember yes. the surgeons were you know stupid bro frat boys. Yes, banana Cutters. hammocks. Yeah. yeah. Banana hammock. <laughs> I mean, that just—that's what makes me. Th- it just makes me think of that. That you know, 
the surgeons don't have to know anything. The surgeons are like people mechanics. Mm-hmm. They, they don't have to have a lot of like critical thinking skills and diagnosing. They just have to like be able to, you know, stick your bits back oh, together. Yeah. Well, let's hope you don't have to go in for surgery within the next six months. And uh, hopefully none of them have listened to this because we have a lot of surgeons come in the store and pick up those business cards, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> we well, might be fucked. We don't. We all know if they're surgeons. They could be any kind of. There's a couple of them I know are surgeons. Well, if you're a surgeon, you better be you know smart. <laughs> so so so, yeah. so here's here's the thing, Doctor Oz. Like as a <laughs> surgeon, he is brilliant. He is recognized for his skill. Right. However, this has been overshadowed by his track record of pushing controversial claims and treatments on his nationally syndicated, extremely popular television show. Where, where's that gun, Mike? Uh, I know it's kind of early in the show, but like... It's all the way over there. Okay, well, fuck it then. So, among some of the unusual or outright false claims suggested by, again, he is a medical professional on his television show include... One, an entire episode suggesting that there were dangerous levels of arsenic and apple juice to the degree that he made hay, uh, hay about it for a whole fucking episode. Uh, what? Uh, I just picture him going, Mom, are you scared now? Are you scared, Mom? Right, so is there a, a small level of arsenic and apple juice? Sometimes. Do you need to devote an hour to scare moms about it? Probably not. Well, the thing is, the arsenic is in the seeds, and the seeds are taken out. And some of the arsenic, minuscule amounts, are going to end up in the juice. But we're mm-hmm. talking like... Minuscule amounts well, in a vat. Yeah, and and so there is so that's the same thing as going on with like uh what was it? Like mercury and lead. Oh yeah, yeah. you're hearing a lot of people make hay about minute traces of either of those being found when you know you probably get more le- mercury exposure eating tuna and you know <laughs> yeah. lead lead so both both of those things, I mean, while your body, they're not great for your body, but there is a certain amount that your body can handle and, yeah. you know, get rid of and will never and, cause you a problem ever. And, but look, look if, if you're not the first emperor of China and you're not mainlining mercury, you're going to yeah. be fine. Exactly. Yeah. And can we just like, why get pissed off at apples? I mean, what they do to you? Well, he is a doctor, so he's always well, tired of them trying to, you know, keep him away. And if you ate tuna for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day, you might get a little sick from mercury. Maybe. You probably get Maybe. sick of tuna before you got sick of mercury, though. Right. I mean, <laughs> but it, like I was saying, scaring moms is easy. I mean, when we were kids, all it took was her finding a and d book in my room. Shit. Well, you know, that was a satanic panic. Yeah, but I mean, still, same general idea. No, nowadays, you just say vaccine and all moms oh. go, oh. Yep. So, so what's he, next? He, here's another one. Two, brought advocates for conversion therapy on a show, leaving them unchallenged. Oh, no. Uh, you, mean, you mean gender? I mean, not or, gender, but... Or yeah. homosexual conversion yeah. therapy? Oh, God. Yes. This, so, yeah, look, that is so, such... Look, that is so far from my mind, you have to... That I had to have clarification. It's <laughs> he like, had to ask. I was like, mm-hmm. I forgot. I like to think that thing doesn't exist because it's just really gross, right? You know, and these these two things that I've just mentioned aren't like strictly related to medicine, but I absolutely wanted to bring them up because he's a terrible person. Well, yeah, they're they're things that a medical professional shouldn't. You would think wouldn't be opening their pie hole about unless sure. they, you know, knew something i'm just gonna just say opinions i'm just gonna say that the only conversion that this podcast is okay with is converting dr oz into sausage meat no because then oh, that, oh, that, you're in free speech jail that, oh that, that, oh. that, that implies someone would have to eat him and i'm not okay with i'm that. not eating him i'm just saying you know feed no. him to somebody but no, not me. i'm not i'm not okay with killing someone i think he should just like lose his medical license i'm not saying kill him i'm saying he'll He's, be dead when it's done i'm not saying kill him if he happens to be dead by the time he's sausage, I'm gonna shut up. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, if 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 you're just saying when he dies, turn him into sausage, it's like so fucking what? <laughs> Who cares? Jesus Christ. Okay. So moving on. <laughs> um, 
Three, specifically in the area of medicine, he pushes, quote, fat-bursting miracle pills on a show directly and as a sponsor. Oh, I, crap. I, I want to know the science behind this shit. Dude, like the little... I'm just imagining, like, little fat cells, like, popping and, like, that running out That sounds unhealthy. Anus. That just sounds like Olestra. Per- no. Turns your belly into a bunch of boba. Oh like, god! Uh, alls. Oh god! <laughs> Just shitting fat for like <laughs> I'm sh- thirty minutes. Oh god! I'm shooting boba pearls out my butt. What, what, why is there so much wax in my toilet? <laughs> why does it look like I put the candle? <laughs> <laughs> look, it looks like um, it looks like when I drain off the uh, the ground beef before oh, making hamburger oh, helper. Oh god! What's what? What else you got, David? Four, this is my last one on this. Uh, four, he has advocated for colloidal silver to treat <sighs> separate conditions ranging from colds, wounds, viruses, and bacteria, but oddly not enough, not lycanthropy. This treatment is not proven to be safe. That's okay. one of the big things about it colloidal is, silver. Mike, Mike not before, only, before hmm? you say anything, hmm. this is the stuff that will eventually turn you blue, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Like this will turn you into a dying Papa Smurf. Yeah. No. Uh. So not only has it not been proven safe, it's not been proven to fucking do anything at all other than turn you blue. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. your body doesn't know what to do with silver, so, other than you know yeah. use it instead of iron. So remember, kids, if you want to act like you're from the movie Avatar, colloidal silver. I think that guy's still blue. Uh, actually, they're dead. Oh, he did. They're he died. Yeah, because it's colloidal silver. No, Here. it doesn't. But that's the thing; it doesn't hurt you at all. It just turns oh, you God. blue. I don't know. That kind of hurts you in a political and like, like business well, way. Yeah, I'm I mean, sure. hurt, well, societally, yes, but sure. it doesn't like <laughs> is no detriment to your health. But Except you're fucking least, blue. Yeah, you're fucking blue. <laughs> you know, I can't help but think if I see a blue person on the street, I'm going to think colloidal silver and be like, that motherfucker used to be a werewolf. <laughs> so um, these, of course, are not the only controversial and questionable medical perspectives brought up on a show. And I'm sorry, but if you need an entire secondary Wikipedia article to cover your myriad of controversies in a very specific category, then perhaps there's a reason to not blindly trust your claims about health. (laughs) Especially if some of your guests on your show are psychics, faith healers, peddlers of unproven medicine, and anti-vaxxers. Does Donald Trump produce his show? Uh, close. Oprah. Oh, uh, I was gonna fuck. say it, it, this is this is veering strangely close to QAnon, like yeah, crazy well, shit. You know her. You remember? Uh, she launched like the she she launched like this insane anti beef campaign back in the nineties, early two thousands, and like beef sales dropped, and it was all based on some shit Dr. Phil said, and I want to remind everyone, Dr. Phil's a psychiatrist, and in no way knows anything about meat. Mm-hmm. God damn it. Uh, yeah, Oprah's done incalculable damage to society. So, yes. so she's just and a she quack, needs to be stopped. She's just a quack doctor minting. And can I just apologize for her being from Mississippi? She she is. God damn it, you're yeah. right. She is. She's she's a Mississippian. Uh, but hey, we still got Morgan Freeman and James Earl Jones. Okay. Well, uh-huh. she, she also introduced us to the Duggars. So there you go. Oh great. Hey, that's fucking god. Fucking damn it. I mean, but but how can she be bad? She gives people cars. Oh fuck off. She <laughs> gave people bees in that one animated GIF someone made. <laughs> So let's move to another example. This is just going to be yes, a brief yes. One. Let's move on to something better that's not going to hurt me so bad. Have either of you heard of Goop? God damn it! <laughs> I just shot myself. Oh. Yes, I never thought I'd say this, but I am unfortunately overly familiar with Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina products. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring up some highlights from an article in Good Housekeeping yeah, because just, this just, shit is dumb. Just, just rifle that stupid shit off, buddy. All right. This article is titled, quote, Gwyneth Paltrow's Most Controversial Goop Moments Over the Years by there, Heather Finn. And there were enough for a fucking article, man. Uh-huh. So we've probably heard of the vagina candle. Uh-huh. 
vaginal steaming, uh -huh. and bee venom therapy, which I assume involves bees in the vagina. <laughs> God damn it. Speaking of vaginas, <laughs> let's talk about the jade egg. Gee, how might the jade be connected to China? I have no idea. So, um, I quote from the article here, quote, of the many goop scandals that have occurred over the years, the great jed, uh, jade egg fiasco of 2017 is perhaps the most well-known. Is this any relation to the T-Bot Dome scandal, or was my history class completely wasted? Your history class sounded like a lot of fun. Okay. <laughs> <This was laughs> um, so, so, so that year, the lifestyle brand began selling a $66 jade egg that it claimed could improve everything from orgasms and hormonal, uh, hormonal imbalances to feminine energy when inserted into a woman's vagina. Oh, no. Gynecologists quickly responded with a warning to women that the eggs could actually be dangerous, and Goop was hit with a $145,000 fine for its, quote, unsubstantiated marketing claims. Can I just bring up the fact that Gwyneth Paltrow seems to have this really weird obsession with just making sure women shove the weirdest shit in their hoo-hahs? Well, you know, if that's your kink, you know. I guess, but I mean, goddamn. She just, you know, do like normal people do and hire a prostitute she wants to shove weird things in weird places i'm just gonna say sex you worker know, yeah sex worker sex worker well let's yeah. i'm the i'm the woke one here yeah I, okay this is my job hashtag him <laughs> too um yep. so let's, I, I i mean i don't know i just i was just gonna say i didn't say a, horror or anything i know god damn <laughs> mike god damn it fuck I was just, <laughs> prostitute is the the, the it, it is actually a dictionary definition. That's, and and you know, they they tend to go by that name here in Jackson. So that's that's, that's, that's like you know penis yeah. or well, vagina. Let's recognize that sex work is real work. Well, and yeah, that yeah, are, yeah absolutely. Right absolutely. I'm not using prostitute as a it's, he doesn't denig mean it. denigration. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, I, I, I don't the, mean to be a woke scold. I'm just sure, you know. but. This but is, I am. I'm just saying this is a roundabout way to get someone to do the ping pong trick. Huh? <laughs> uh, just firing $66 jade eggs across the room. <laughs> Two girls, one egg. <laughs> it's like an artillery fire. <laughs> just oh my God. Anyone know where Gwyneth is and you just hear banging in another room? <laughs> it just sounds like someone's this chucking doorknobs <laughs> at the fucking wall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get that visual out of your head. Okay, let's keep going. Yeah. Okay, so, so let's, um, let's move on to the more problematic part of this episode. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, it could get worse. Let, oh yeah. yes. Let's talk a little bit about Orientalism. Oh god. So yes, it's it's me being the academic. I'm sorry. Hey, that's um, fine. That's why you're here. Right. So, so a place I need to go here for a brief discussion is Orientalism and why that is an issue, especially because of the many topics we've already discussed and that we're discussing for the rest of the episode that deal with perceptions of, quote, Oriental cures. Uh-huh. Now, what do we typically associate with the idea of, quote, the Orient? Well, me personally, I picture a lot of racist stereotypes and big trouble in, in, in a little China. How about you, Mike? Mm -hmm. Well... <sighs> So I don't have a lot of connection because e even growing up, the Orient was an outdated uh, stereotype and sure. term. So, you know, saying an Oriental really wasn't a thing, you know, usually, at least for me growing up, it was, you know, Chinese, Japanese, yeah. or, let's you not know, or if you're a racist, you know, you use the racist Yeah, terms. let's not forget my parents were like 10 to 20 years we, older than yours, yeah. so I heard Orient a lot. So, you know, but, you know, you just, just you know, filter out the, the racial shit, the racist right. shit. Yeah, but uh, sister's best friend is Chinese. My parents still said she's from the Orient. I'm like, <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So, but, uh, Orientalism isn't just about using the terminology. That's right, something that right, I kind of want to talk about. Well, yeah, it's it's like, it's... Uh, yeah, go it's ahead. <laughs> you, David, no, you go David's ahead. a woman with the, I, with the, with the, in, I, the stuff, yeah. I, I have a thought, but no way to verbalize it. <laughs> Without I mean, sounding okay. awful. 
Well, no, like, no. When you get just, it, I want to hear it. I mean, you get it. You, you, you know, you have that thing. You like, there's something there, but you can't like fit the words together in a coherent sure. way. It's not, yeah. it's not sounding horrible. If I, if it was going to sound horrible, I'd say it and let you laugh at it. Oh, and okay, then that's fair. Fix it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's just so, you know, David. What is Orientalism? Okay, so Orientalism is the Western world's imitation or depiction of what is like the Eastern world. The issue is that this is a process by which the Eastern world is defined by its relation and difference to the Western world. We would call this othering if we're talking about it in a uh, literary sense. So basically the American idea that everything in the Orient is a Chinese restaurant. The interior of a Chinese restaurant. No, I'd I put it a different way. I'd say basically it's the American, I, how the how America treats every other culture. Yeah, and in, in a lot of ways, that's uh, specifically we're going to tie it mostly to the Middle East and further east. Mm-hmm. Like, even like the term Middle East, for example, is like an Orientalist kind of idea. But right. But the key thing here is now... Um, Othering served a purpose in the history of human development for a long time in the age of the first hominids. Uh However, one could argue that we are sufficiently more advanced than our gibbering tree-bound ancestors. And I would argue we are not because I've read the YouTube comments. Uh, Yeah, I mean, so so here's the problem, (laughs) is that the, the software of humans should be past it, but the hardware... Mm-hmm. is still the yeah. same yeah and so we're still running on uh so i would say that there tandies. is there is like a hardware component to that because everybody yeah. is subject to othering well and that's why we still have it today have to, right have absolutely to work yeah and it's, it, it's it a thing takes, we like, have to try to yeah you, you can't it, just sit there and yeah just let your notions however they fly in your head go because mm-hmm. you have to like marshal that shit and be like, no, that thought's yeah. bad. Bad thought. Just bad, like that, when that's that, exactly it. When yes. a cat so, poops on the rug, bad cat. Bad cat. <laughs> so, so I'm not going to get into the etymology of this bullshit and so, everything like that. Um, I'm not going to subject our audience to more Jeffrey Ch- uh, Jeffrey Chaucer. Thank you. But suffice it to say, <laughs> the, be term, on the, extras. <laughs> the term the Orient has fuddy, uh, like fuzzy boundaries based on how agreeable a population might be to European sensibilities historically. Right. So for a long time, westernmost Europe would conceive of anything in the Balkans as the Orient. Wow. Yeah. Um, like that's where the French term, uh, which the Orient is derived, comes from the French word, and it was to refer to regions past the Balkans. Okay. Um, but we usually think of what we would call the Middle East and beyond the Orient. So, like so, Iraq, India, places like that. Yeah, what we consider the Orient in popular culture is usually associated with places like India, China, and anything along the eastern half of the Silk Road. So that's why your Persian rugs were typically typically called Oriental rugs. Mm-hmm. Anything okay. that you could buy in Period 1 imports <laughs> it, it, it is Oriental <laughs> oh, to them. No. I'd say according to Hollywood, though, pretty much Asian, anything Asian was yeah. considered Orient. Yes. And I, and I mean... Asia excluding India. Right. Well, and, and in sometimes Holland. India well, gets thrown in yeah, there. Like, China. you can go to a Chinese food restaurant and have Buddha, which is uh, an, a concept derived from India, and still have one That's of the, l- lucky, uh, the lucky Neko statues from Japan, right. but it's a Chinese restaurant. Yeah. And it's Indo-China. all just pandering to us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, so, so broadly painting cultures and their cultural exports under a broadly Asian sentiment is an example of Orientalism. Damn it. So this is a serious issue in the medical community now as the validity of some therapies from Asian cultures is still considered in doubt. Again, it comes from pla- uh, painting a culture with a large not of the West brush. Okay, yeah, so we, right. we went from everything from Asia being like good juju to now everything from Asia being, uh, that's not real science. And it's all because of Stanley and his fucking rattlesnake oil. Oh, exactly. I would say that, but... Well, well, uh, there's Definitely a large corner, component of that because so much flim flammery today takes advantage of this Orientalist concept to push their bullshit. Oh, right. yeah. Right. Because so, I, think, I think it's an yeah. exotic right. kind of... Yes, yeah. exactly. 
Yeah. So, so in a sense, I'm not sure, but there is a non-zero chance that even calling this stuff snake oil is our being complicit in some way in the Orientalist process. This is like a complicated thing here. Uh, here like, here's, <laughs> here's my yeah. argument with that. The term has evolved <laughs> like language does, and snake oil is more closely associated these days with Westerns and the Old West terms right. like stanley well like when you say snake oil to somebody they're gonna think here's my yeah. cure all made of whiskey and beaver spit yeah I, I would say that at least in modern times like yes when i think yeah. of thought of snake oil i really didn't make the the uh Asian connection. I was trying to think of a better way to say that now because apparently you know, <laughs> no, 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 no. Asian's fine. Just don't say Oriental. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. But yeah, the 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 uh, that connection. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, because snake oil, I just thought of. No, I didn't even know that that was a connection. Yeah. I just thought it was just people peddling, you know, junk. Right, you know, junk yeah. science back in you know the old west. See, but, I thought it was just a natural assumption they would be like rattlesnakes. It's like, well, yeah. there's plenty of them out here in the desert. I'll just milk these little bastards. Um, uh, you can see where I'm coming from with oh, this. Yeah. Stuff. I can. Yeah. Like, I it, just it, think it, that the term has evolved. Mm -hmm. So I think it's okay to use it now because we're talking about flim flammery. Right. So, so a thought I had while you're talking about that mm -hmm. is also there's some racism built into this mm -hmm. because yeah. you know because the the asian uh traditional cures are good but we don't see them pulling traditional cures from other parts of the world do we like africa hmm there's oh. so many jokes I'm not making right now. You know, any of the, I'm really the quote, proud of myself. You know, lesser. I, I'm not. I don't third believe this. World. I'm not saying third anything. Third world. I'm not saying anything. Third world. I countries. believe in, but what other people would say? Yeah, you know, less developed. There's not a lot of like voodoo stuff being yeah. sold on the market. Yeah, so, except so for Miss Cleo. I, I, Whereas, whereas the Asian mysticism is seen as, ooh, you know, could be something there. Well, I think part of know. that is because of the the far reaching into the past of the Chinese dynasties. Oh, well, true, but and having like a near uninterrupted uh, line from here all the way back on some level. Well. This is like a bag of snakes. Like no yeah. matter how we approach this, we're getting bit. Yeah, yeah, and that's fine. Yeah. We're, I mean, we're, we're, we're sticking we're, our hands in there, so we're going to get like, bit. You Four know, we're cis. recognizing that we need to like open the mm -hmm. discussion and that sort of thing. And I think that's the most important thing. Is like we 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 say here we're not experts. Yeah, yeah. we're we're in no way experts, and we're we're three cis white guys. Trying to be sensitive and understanding, and it, like we're we're gonna fuck up, and we apologize. So we're gonna put our foots in our mouths, but oh, we like the mm -hmm. taste of our feet, oh, so yeah, that's no, okay. I well, love the taste. Well, well, speaking of feet, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So segue. that's quite the segue. <laughs> I love it. So you know, while all of this is complicated, what is not complicated is how Orientalist marketing strategies make a shitload of money. Oh yeah, and one of those ways is the Kenoki foot pad. Oh buddy, do you guys remember the Kenoki foot pad? Unfortunately, boy, yes. Boy, do I. I. I stayed up. I watched a lot of USA Up all night. No, no, say it right. USA <laughs> Up. All night. All night. Well, or unless it was Gilbert Godfrey. Which, USA all right. up all night. All I'm right. Gilbert Godfrey. And we're going to be Gilbert watching. Back. That's <laughs> scarily <laughs> accurate. Guys. We're going to be watching Critters. <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, damn it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I distinctly remember those commercials. Yeah, no, they were running definitely, during that time. Yeah. Yeah, so, so like we'll, we'll watch that commercial, right? Um, and uh, we'll, yeah. we'll play a little bit of audio for you guys, so you can hear that. Are you poisoning yourself with unavoidable toxins from the food, water, and air we breathe? Do you suffer from the following symptoms? Then you need to discover the ancient Japanese secret to perfect health. Introducing Kanoki foot pads. 
the incredible detox system that naturally draws toxins out of your body when you sleep. Look, Kanoki foot pads remove heavy metals, metabolic wastes, toxins, parasites, chemicals, cellulite, and more, giving you back your vitality and health. So he here's my question for you two gentlemen. What do you think is happening here with these foot pads? What what are these foot pads actually doing? It's it's fucking foot stink being pulled out, man. It's just sweat. Oh, well, the stink what? out. Oh, my stink out, boy. <laughs> oh God. So, uh, what I, what I think's going on? So, there's a uh, YouTube YouTube channel I watch that does a lot of electronics teardowns called mm -hmm. uh, Big Clive Live. He's a very, very gay, awesome uh, Scotsman living in the Isle of Man. Is this the guy that Aww. says, keep your dick in a vice? No, no, that's that's a problematic man. I stopped watching him. Oh, okay, good. All right. But, uh, but no, he... Uh, he does teardowns and stuff, and one of the things he did, he's several things he's done is like quackery electronics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's like these electrodes that were that are used, and you can get all this stuff on like eBay or AliExpress, like super cheap. But there's these mm -hmm. like electrodes you do a foot bath in, and you drop these this electrode in, oh, and while yeah. it does pass current through it, it's got both both you know the positive and negative in the tub so the current just passes between the plates and doesn't actually you know shock your feet right but the metal they're made of like oxidizes while they're passing current and it just releases this billowing the like, bubbles brown bl bubbly sludge out and they advertise it as being you know what's co the toxins it's pulling out of your body so there are processes you can do that while having nothing to do with your skin look really gross and <laughs> right. so I'm, I'm assuming it's some kind of thing like that like maybe with exposure to air or maybe the, the moisture on your feet yeah it, i just like, assumed it was like something and i assumed it was a reaction was foot sweat yeah Okay, so yeah, you guys are you're, you guys are pretty much there. So the idea is that the ads claim that applying Kenoki foot pads to the soles of the feet at night would remove heavy metals, metabolic waste, toxins, parasites, chemicals, and cellulite from your body. Cellulite. They even. were they were marketed as a ancient Japanese secret. Well, well, uh, I, I need to interrupt here real quick. This is straight up <laughs> stolen from a Calgon commercial from the 1970s that was in a super stereotypical Chinese laundry where the lady was like, "Oh, how do you get your white so white?" And the guy goes ancient Chinese secret, and then it turns out it's Calgon because the wife is like my husband, and uh, goes through one of those you know detergent commercials, and then she comes out and goes we need more Calgon, and this wasp white woman turns around and goes ancient Chinese secret, huh? So uh, Cal Calgon, Kevin wasn't I? I don't remember that being a detergent i remember that being like a bath like <laughs> additive yes yes because apparently everybody got tired of cleaning their clothes with it and just fucking bathed in the shit i remember my mom used it like she was like made her like all slippery calgon take me away yeah that's what happens when uh like like you basically lie. borax and yeah. lie rips your skin off yeah, now, I remember super. Calgon from the movie Space Mutant. Oh, well, that's different. He drove around in the little Zamboni thing and, like, yeah. So, you know, I recall many of these ads late at night when I was a teenager. <laughs> um, I have sleeping problems, so I'd pretty much lie awake watching cable about, until about, like, 3 or 4 in, four in the morning most nights. Uh, during middle school and high school. God, right. you, must, um, you must have seen a lot of, like, Fushigi commercials, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fushigi? Yeah, yeah the, uh... The levitating ball that you know. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I also remember the commercials for blue blockers. Oh uh, yeah. Mm hmm And the so, and the shades with the rear view mirror in the sides. Sorry. Go on. <laughs> well, no. A lot of as seen TV on stuff. Uh, as seen on TV stuff. Yeah. Totally. Yes. So I I think these are kind of like perfect examples of Orientalism in action. Especially the Fushigi. Um, yeah. Mm hmm. So these were quite the money makers too, earning about fourteen million before their Holy ads were finally removed shit. from TV. We need it. We need a gimmick. 
Well, too bad that sticking duct tape to someone's feet for money is yeah. out of the question. And to be honest, you know, I remember all these, but I grew up with uh, KTEL super hits of the 70s myself. 50 original hits by the original artists. <laughs> I remember those, too. Oh, yeah, those were great. And I will for never... For me, it was now. That's what I call music. Oh, yeah. 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 I do remember I that, though. never stop missing that blue screen with the contact information and the 1-800 number. Turn it up, man. Is that Freedom Rock? Yeah. Freedom Rock. Yeah. I couldn't remember what it was called. <laughs> or uh, Columbia House. Oh, God. Or, or Pure Moods. Oh, yeah. Pure, yeah. oh, God. Pure, Pure Moods. Pure Moods was a good album. I don't care what you fuckers say. I loved it. No. Zenfear, Master of the Pan Flute. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's my jam. Yep. So, um, <laughs> okay, let's move on. <laughs> As for what these pads actually do, I have an article from Healthline about detoxifying foot pads with two medical experts weighing in on them. The first expert is Deborah Rose Wilson, PhD, MSN, RN, IBCLC, AHN-BC, CHT, Associate Professor, and Holistic Healthcare Practitioner, and Dino Westphalen, PharmD, uh, and clinical pharma, uh, pharmacist. God, that's so. a lot of fucking letters. Yeah. I was going to say MSN. She worked for Microsoft? I swear she's a messenger. I don't know. I don't know. Like, half of those I'm not familiar with. I, so I know RN, PhD, and so, so she was PharmD. A, yeah. So, this is from the article, Detox Foot Pads, Your Questions Answered. So, as for the experts consulting this article, I would argue they're pretty credible, and while yes, Dr. Deborah Rose Wilson does practice holistic medicine, I'd argue that there is some merit to it and it has its uses, especially as she practices it in conjunction with what we'd consider like standard medicine. I'm assuming that in this case, holistic medicine means like, means like you're, you're suffering from anxiety. I'm going to give you something, but also if you tried meditation. Yeah, yeah do so, some fucking yoga. Yeah, so ho- exactly. holistic does... It, does it, get a bad rap because mm-hmm. traditionally it means holistic, as in you know treating the whole. Yes, not just yeah. you know the symptoms. Yeah, so it, that that I can that kind of yeah notion yeah. I can get behind, but yeah. definitely I, gets gets mm, taken out of context and yes, out of whack. I completely agree. We're not talking about fucking what's it called when it's water. Uh, oh, that's uh, yeah. uh God damn it. No, no Shit, using homeop- the vagina. Homeopathy. Homeopathy. Yes. Yeah. All right. So let's let's go. All right. All right. So boiling this article down. One, there is no published study or indication that these pads actually accomplish anything. Of well, course, no, they they do accomplish something. They make money. Yes. Ching. Right. Yeah. Um. Quote. But what about those dark stains on the pad in the morning? You, you ask. You're a filthy fucking animal. <laughs> <laughs> Those are shown in the ad to represent the toxins being extracted from your body. It is most likely the result of a combination of sweat from your feet, mixing with vinegar and herbs used in the foot pad. Wow. So quackwatch.org <laughs> determined... <laughs> I'm bookmarking that. Everybody go and bookmark that right now. Uh, so quackwatch.org determined that you can get the same effect of discoloration with a simple drop of distilled water. Okay. So dropping a distilled water on the pad. Yeah, yeah because I, it's yeah. just the it's just yeah. the moisture interacting with the vinegar and the combination mm, of herbs and spices. Hey. So you're technically pickling your feet. Yeah. yeah or hey, even try some other stuff. Try pissing on the foot pads. Or just you know <laughs> being here in Mississippi, the humidity would probably turn them. Yeah, that look, probably. You- Entirely possible. I'm not going to lie, man. We live in Mississippi. We ran around barefoot. I'm pretty sure the bottom of both of our feet look like hobbit feet. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I have, like, dirty hobbit feet. I'm, I'm, I'm with you guys. <laughs> oh, no, I hope we haven't turned anyone on. Let's move Probably, on quickly. Unfortunately. <laughs> so, so what I really want to pull from this is that these foot pads are presented as, quote, Eastern medicine. Uh-huh. And the most fucked up part about this is that Kenoki sounds vaguely Japanese. Let's put of course. He- heavy on the vaguely. Right. So the best translation, and I put that in quotes, that I could find for it is tree tree. <laughs> but that is the form of three characters, ki, no, and ki, not a singular word, and according to the translation app I use, would actually be pronounced kinoquo. That sounds like something you have with your meat. Like... <laughs> I'm going to boil some quinoa. And, right. so, uh, 
Season so again, of I'm, I'm not an expert in spoken or written Japanese, but if we have a Japanese speaking listener, I would love to hear from you on this topic because I'm trying to figure out if it's an actual fucking word or not. Yeah, absolutely. Please contact us uh, via the website supernatpod.com. Rocks. The, the, the bad thing is, if I had read this uh, doc before, I think I had a couple people I could have reached out to. Son of a bitch. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you can reach out later. And we'll, we'll, we'll do I mean, it they don't, in they the... They don't speak it fluently, but they do know enough Japanese, I guess, to try to... And have resources to... Better than me. Look at Better it. Than okay. Me. Well, that's great, because uh, for our... Uh, I think the problem is, is that, you know, seeing a Romanized word... Version. Yeah, mm-hmm. if... Unless it's a a uh, accepted upon Romanized spelling could mean yeah. generally a bunch of things. Unless well, you I see mean, the kanji or the katakana. Well, let's see if we can get that for uh, uh, Weekend Weird next week. An update. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll do that. So, so now the really fucked up part of all of this is that the company, Exacta 2008, Jesus. <laughs> was put together by two non-Asian men. Yehuda Judah Levin and Barush Levin. The, uh, did, didn't they start canon films? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the FTC hit them in 2009. However, due to legal maneuvering that I don't want to get into, the brand still exists today, only unable to claim to be an ancient Japanese secret. Yay. <sighs> oh, fucking joy. Right. So wait a minute. You mean I can get some sweet Kenoki foot pads even today? Yep. Yeah, and they're only like a buck now. Fuck really? Yeah. yeah I no, think I'm not stick them on my butt. Y'all, y'all, we need to test them. Stick them on my butt. <laughs> you can Swamp do that, ass. man. Swamp ass killers. Here we go. <laughs> hey, they could be. So, they could be the finally the uh, the man's uh, man ponds. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. There you go, man pond. So, so therein lies the problem, though. The association between Kenoki and Orientalist thinking has allowed it to persist as a deceptive bit of snake oil, and I still see it on the shelves of Asian marts that you I go to. Know, that is the saddest part, I think. The fact that the Asians are selling it themselves. You know, I mean, the, I, I, I've never seen it at Mr. Chin's, but I have seen like that uh, that sort of generic Asian extends with a picture of uh, Ryu and Chun Li screwing. Oh, oh God. <laughs> But I, mean, I guess I guess I get it as a business. I mean, sure. you yeah. sell you sell what makes money. Like, yeah, we I work at a liquor store, and I know nobody there wants to drink. You know, quality house or Dant J W Dant, but we sell it because well, it's the cheapest whiskey you can get, and it sells. Like people will buy well, it. People that's want someone it. trying to kill themselves, though. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying. Well, it's, you know, it's still, you know, you have to carry what people want. Yeah. Right. So. And that's that's the tricky part about this, because they're unfortunately complicit in this process, not necessarily by choice. Sometimes it is by choice, but they're still kind of perpetuating these ideas. Yeah, I, just but to still, survive. It's, it's definitely a survival thing, and I yeah. don't really hate them for carrying it. I hate the people right. for making it. That the, they have to carry it, I think, is a right. huge issue. Right. So, so, for now, I just want us to turn our focus to our, our main part of the episode we're finally getting to alex chu like oh, an hour later God. yeah I was gonna say, it's been an hour, hour in, we're so. one hour and one minute in let's talk <laughs> yeah. about the subject of the show <laughs> yeah finally. so you know I, I feel like it was important to mention all of this stuff it though. really was oh well, yeah mm-hmm. so you know we're moving into a great example of internet snake oil here with an orientalist bent and boys let me tell you it gets complicated <laughs> <laughs> oh, we shit. need that shirt <laughs> my cup's so, empty uh-oh so, my introduction to the wacky world of Alex Chu was through Tech TV. <laughs> wow. Now, yeah. He, he first appeared on television in 1999 on a segment of The Daily Show. Really? Uh, it's a, now, yeah, it's this, a classic bit with correspondent Mo Rocca. Was this uh, Craig Kilborn or John Stewart? John Stewart. Okay. Yeah. Um, it does get a little cringy. There are some, like, uh, Asian American jokes. But overall, it's still pretty funny. Alex Chu, what have you invented? Um, I have inv- invented a device that um, gives immortality. 
What he's invented are the eternal life rings and foot braces, guaranteed by Alex to make you live forever. And for a limited time only, he's made them available for the remarkable price of $16.50. What do I get for $16.50? You get immortality for $16.50. Do I get anything else? No. There's no free calendar or a barometer thrown in? No, no, stuff like that. So for $16.50, all I get is immortality. Yes, but I think immortality is quite enough. Now, as you saw, if you watch the clip, which we have linked in the show notes, at one point, Mo Rocca in uh, interviews Alex Chu's grandmother. Mm -hmm. I cannot confirm it, but I do believe his grandmother has since passed. Now, this is the one he was trying to keep alive, right? Yes, with the, with the, with the ring, immortality the, rings. Yes, okay. <laughs> Uh, wow. Alex Chu has not mentioned what's happened to his grandmother, but I am pretty convinced she's dead. He is welcome on the show to let us know. <laughs> There's a part of me that hopes she is like, uh, what's that guy with a computer in his stomach from uh, Marvel? Oh, um, yes. Uh, oh, not, not Zemo. Not, not Zemo. Um, Zola, Zola. Zola. I Arnim hope she's Zola, like yeah. Armin Zola. <laughs> Just so, uh... <laughs> So, I first saw Alex Chu on a TV show on Tech TV prior to the G4 merger that ultimately doomed the channel. That was a um, damn shame, by the way. Yeah. The show was called Unscrewed with Martin Sargent. Okay. So, Sargent was a writer of a couple of Tech TV shows, such as The Screensavers. I remember The Screensavers. Yeah, it's like the weirdest idea for a show, just like two guys answer your computer questions on TV. It's a great mm -hmm. idea. Yeah, it's like, it's like, like I'm not saying it's a bad idea. It's yeah, it's kind of weird. It's, um, it, it's like click and clack, the Tappet Brothers, but for computers. Mm -hmm. it's, like, oh, it's, so it's, like, it'd be, it's like point and click, the or, computer brothers, or a click and right click. <laughs> I like uh, point and click better. Yeah. So I was kind so, of looking through the the Comedy Central thing you linked, and I mean his, his prices were reasonable. He was selling his immortality stuff for sixteen fifty. Oh, he's giving them away. Oh. Oh, wow. just, yeah, he'll, just, he'll literally yeah, give them away. Just handing them out. Yeah, hot. So, so you have to say he's not in it for the money, at least. Um, at least not. You know, he's not looking first. to get rich. I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll, there, there's more to this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, it gets complicated again. So, <laughs> God um, damn it! In the pursuit of more content, Tech TV gave Martin Sargent a talk show <laughs> about the internet, where he and his gal Friday, Laura Swisher, would cover mid two thousands web news and interview classic internet personalities. Over yeah. the course of the show's run, titans of early internet weirdness would appear. We're talking Maddox, Manfei, oh, Peter yeah. Hand hey. Guy. Con guy, <laughs> Star Wars kid, mm -hmm. and that dude who would cover his bare ass and taint and balls and paint and sit on canvases. <laughs> I miss the Wild West days of I, the internet. I remember so everything much. except Maddox. I don't remember Maddox either, but everything else I had a vivid image of. Yes. Okay, Maddo Maddox was great. Um, he also, I think, Sean Baby was on at some point. Oh god. So, yeah, like, we're talking, like, all the old school shit we love from the internet. Oh, yes. So, um, most important to me, however, was Alex Chu, who would end up becoming a frequent guest. You were never quite sure if he was in on the joke or oblivious to his role, but what was important was that he was game and became a recurring presence across a number of Martin Sargent's later productions, including Web Drifter and Infected. That, so, is, that is a hell of a slope in titles, by the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what struck me about Alex Chu is that he was this kind of weird, kind of awkward, but kind of charming in his own way, ultimately appearing harmless to a, uh, to a degree. Sadly, as of 2022, that is not the case anymore. Well, you know what they say? You either die the hero or live to become the villain. Right. So he may also be going by an alternate name, Chao He. Uh, supposedly a fan, but more likely a sock puppet account due to similar writing styles. I'm kind of hoping this is his Tyler Durden and he's hanging him on. <laughs> you know, it, you know it, it could be a Tyler Durden thing. So, <laughs> or, or, or like uh, you know, uh, Stephen and Mark from uh, 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 God damn it, Moon Knight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's entirely possible. <laughs> so. Not a whole lot is known about Alex Chu's background, as he doesn't really talk about his past in ways you would expect. 
He mostly focuses on bizarre claims and pseudoscience, but as far as things like who his parents are and what they do, those details are a little harder to find. Really? Yeah. As for his biography, here's what I could pull through uh, from a couple of sources, including his writings and write-ups on a few websites. Alex Chu was born February 8th, 1971 in San Francisco. He is currently located in San Francisco, last I could confirm. Okay. His parents were apparently talking about divorce around the time he was born, perhaps guided by prophecy. Hmm. He would be shipped off to Taiwan, where he was raised by his grandparents. Now, describing his family from his website, My father is a businessman, importing and exporting between USA and China. My stepmother is the fourth stepmom, that's fourth (laughs) F-O-R-T-H. My stepmother is the fourth stepmom already. I don't, I feel like that I don't even know her. That is. Which is a really weird Kind thing. of sad. That is incredibly yeah. sad, man. Yeah, it's just like, it's like that, that level of vulnerability is like really interesting. And I don't know what to make of it. I don't know. It's so, so judging by looking at the, I saw, I watched a bit of the, uh, the, the daily show interview just a mm-hmm. second ago uh-huh. he's i don't know i don't know what to he's either extremely uncomfortable or you know no judgments here but maybe a little spectrumy i don't know he's, i do feel like there is something where he might be and again it's not fair for me to like diagnose that yeah, we're not trying to diagnose but, but, but he, he just definitely seems, comes he had, off as uh has that kind of unique s- that stiffness of somebody that's not not really good at social interactions at all like me which which it's a little weird because uh, like if you see his 2022 videos uh he he definitely kind of carries himself differently and there's a a little bit more confidence and that sort of thing but it's it's, it's weird like yeah like we're gonna be talking well, about I, this guy a lot over the next year i, I, will, I will say so <laughs> oh is that a threat or a promise i'll say a promise and a threat <laughs> that that uh it it gets easier with age because you have mm-hmm. more points of reference well but he doesn't age though he's immortal well, oh experience. Right. okay it gets better you get it gets easier social interactions get better easier with experience observation yeah because observing you have, yeah. mortals you know yeah you you, you have more experience you and and he has so much time to gain yeah. experience now because yeah he's not oh, aging yeah. so yeah you know he'll just get better so, he'll be like He'll be able to like just talk to anybody and like get yeah. them to do anything. Who knows? One day he might actually be able to talk to a woman. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> I am so sorry. I I, 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 I feel a little bad there. because he is very unlucky in love. I'm, and we'll talk about I, that in the future. I, I, Kevin, because does that mean there's hope for me too? Mike, there's always hope for you, buddy. Okay, good. Now I feel Alex? terrible. Fuck. Let's move on. <laughs> well, here, I, I'm gonna make you feel less terrible now. Okay. All right. Now, Alex makes sure to emphasize that he is not Taiwanese. He is Chinese, in all caps. Mm -hmm. This is going to be important later. Okay. Um. Make a note of that. Mm -hmm. At some point, he returned to America and received an AS degree from uh, City College of San Francisco. So that's an associate's degree. Okay. Um, I just read the, yeah. Um, He worked as an associate's, but it's an AA. Is there a difference? I don't know. Um, I I guess maybe there is a difference. Okay. But um, he worked as a sushi uh, a sushi ugh, sushi chef for a time. In addition to working in sales for quote Japanese companies, likely for his father, and then quit to patent his immortality device, which went through in October of 1999. You heard me. I I really fucking wish I hadn't. <laughs> You're telling me he patented this thing. Well, and yes. And got the patent. So yes, I have the patent documents. So, oh, so no. is it a design patent or a functional patent? It is a function and design patent. Uh, I think I have it linked in the show notes, but we will. I will make sure we have that patent yeah. in the show notes. Pl- sure. Please get that to me for Saturday. Yeah. Um, so here's the other thing. He also seems to subscribe to Jewish faith, but it's a little weird. This uh, is a subject for a whole separate episode, oh, I think. Oh, yeah. Yes, we Buddy. are going to be 
we're going to be covering Alex Chu for a while, not next episode, but, but like, like occasionally we're well, going to pop in and like, so here's one of the weird things about Alex Chu. Yeah, we've got like a whole new segment happening now. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. So now, aside from his love of China and his immortality devices, Alex Chu has two other loves. Cats That's and adorable. Alicia Silverstone. That's creepy. I yeah. quote from <laughs> I, I'm going to quote from his website real quick. Quote, Alicia Silverstone is so beautiful. She is the example of a perfect human blend. I shall my endeavor coffee. to make everyone as beautiful as Alicia with my inventions. My inventions are to help people reach perfection. Man, he watched way too many Aerosmith videos as a, you know, young oh person. God, and clueless. Oh, or yeah. blocks from the past. Yeah. Like, I, I don't blame him. Alicia Silverstone's great. Sure. And, you know, truly he's doing the Lord's work here. I just, I, okay. Or, or, I, he wants to make everyone as beautiful as Alicia. I want you both to imagine me merged with Alicia Silverstone. Now, I'm going to give you a minute to begin and stop screaming. Ugh. All right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yep, that's, that's what that's he the wants. World that Alex Chu wants. He w- <laughs> look, even even the thought of a perfect Alicia Silverstone like copy with your brain in it is terrifying. <laughs> Going on and on about Egregore. Like, even, if you talk, <laughs> even if your voice just it sounded like her. But. Oh no, no, no! Look, not sound. Imagine Alicia Silverstone again. Uh, Alicia Silverstone, and you just hear, "What's up?" <laughs> Let's talk about Bigfoot. <laughs> Alicia, you've been smoking. <laughs> <laughs> smoking hot. <laughs> so, this week for this episode, I just want to focus on his immortality device. Oh, yeah. There is far too much to cover about this guy. I'm going to maybe summarize a little bit of his unique worldview. Again, though, almost too much to cover in that regard. Kevin, you've seen my list of topics. I have. I, fucking seen this list we're doomed this this is some incredible stuff yeah we're gonna cover him again x I, I x gonna you. give it to you move over buddy you've you've been you've been upstaged by chew tube yep yep i'm gonna probably start like every uh week uh week and weird i'm gonna pull up like what's his latest youtube video what's going <laughs> oh, on oh <laughs> god yep So, you know, before we begin, I want to quote Alex's reply to a question in a slash dot Q&A. Slash dot. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. That takes me back, right? I remember that website. I went there today. (laughs) Yeah, Mike still goes. Yeah. They got (laughs) decent tech news. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this is Alex's reply to a question that 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 pretty much tore him to, to shreds, but I think this reply is pretty emblematic of Alex Chu's thinking. His response to the question is, quote, I know my theories and findings are hard for you to accept because they are so original and extraordinary. But one day in the future, you will see that I am right. You will be forested. That, that's literally how yeah. he spells it. Forested. Um, to accept my invention as millions of people around you tell you that I am right. Do that, that- you get the feeling that it would be really easy to get Alex with a ligma joke? I, you know what I'm getting from this? What? That sounds a lot like Donald Trump. It really, I, it, I've got the bigliest, bigliest uh, immortality rings. You just wouldn't believe they're on my cock. Surprise! He is a fan of Donald Trump. I go oh, fucking God figure. Mm-hmm. So you know, I, I think that quote's a pretty good. This lets you know like who we're dealing to uh, with and what his approach to criticism is. Yeah. So right. let, let's talk about his immortality ring, shall we? Oh. Let's like let's get into this shit. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. So when you go to his website, livemuchlonger.com, Jesus Christ! One of the first things you see is the following message. Uh huh. Facebook bans my ads because they say my stuff cannot save lives. Google, YouTube, and Bing ban my ads too because they don't allow natural cure products. So, buckle up, fuckers. This shit is going to be wild. <laughs> I 
I can't strap in anymore. I'll die. <laughs> I'm going to have to install a seatbelt on this chair. You really are. <laughs> oh, shit, man. You're going to we're, we're gonna have to get like those little bars that lower down like oh, we're on a roller coaster. Oh, no. Yeah. We're going to need like the leg clamps like they had on the Enterprise that, in the movies. I'm just going to need like a... a uh, Centrifuge I, chair. A, a padded Iron Maiden to just like jump in and close. Everybody got their supernatural selection life jacket. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh God. His, his immortality device, a pair of rings, sometimes known as the eternal life rings or the eternal life foot braces, have a U.S. patent number of. Five million nine hundred eighty-nine thousand one hundred seventy-eight under Alexander Y. C. Chu of Immortality Device Com Inc. I want to make a Shang Chi joke, but I mustn't make a Shang Chi joke. Yeah, I saw. I saw the devices in the Daily Show bit. I so the the foot the foot things look like kind of like staplers that you stick your feet in. <sighs> so. We immediately get this disclaimer from Alex Chu on the information page about his device. Oh, good. Please believe me. Everything you read is true and is important. Now people do not have to age anymore. Seriously, though, guys. Come on. Believe me. Mm-hmm. So how do they work? <laughs> magnets. Fucking <laughs> magnets. How do they work? Tell me, David. Yeah. How, how the fuck uh, do the magnets actually, work? magnets. Magnets, yes. apparently. So, from the website, quote, According to Alex Chu, um... I'm sorry, I I forget which website this is, but according to Alex (laughs) Chu, based on testimonies, facts, and proofs, people... Oh, no, this is from his website. He's referring to himself in the third person. Oh, oh, right, right. Yes, of course. Uh, According to Alex Chu, based on testimonies, facts, and proofs, people are believed to be able to stay physically young forever by using his new inventions, the Eternal Life Rings and the Eternal Life Foot Braces. The Eternal Life Rings are to be worn on both small fingers of a user during sleep. The Eternal Life Foot uh, foot Braces are to be worn on all the toes of the feet during sleep. Both devices consist of rare earth or ceramic magnets and plastic braces, which hold magnets onto the fingers of the user. The inventor explained that the fingers and toes are negative and positive terminals of your body. Okay. So, so we're 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 goddamn batteries again. God damn. Yeah. Can I just say that the life foot braces just make me picture Forrest Gump as a kid wearing these things running and then getting his ass beaten. Oh, man. So, this is a bold claim. <laughs> yeah. can, can, where, where's his uh, uh, clinical study proofs? Well, well, don't worry. Alex is smart. Oh, good. Quote, The eternal life rings and the eternal life foot braces invented by Alex Chu are believed to allow humans to stay physically young forever or turns humans physically younger... Quote, our lawyer told us to use the word believe as long as you wear the rings or foot braces every night during sleep. <laughs> oh, thank God for his lawyer. Also, here's the thing. In 400 years, when he's still selling this shit, we're going to look real dumb. You know, honestly, nothing would make me happier. <laughs> Mike, how about you? 400 I, years from now, he's still alive selling this shit. We're, would, would you be okay? No. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, if... If, if he turns out to be true, I'm 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 you're out. I'm done. I'm I'm you're killing outie. myself. Okay. We could get immortality rings from him. I say we do it because he'll send you them. How much? Um, you know, like he'll he'll no, like he'll give them away. If we say we want to review his rings, he will probably send them to us. Oh, dude, Kevin, remember when I used to say I was going to live forever, and you said you'd you'd kill me? You want me to kill him? No, I'll kill him. <laughs> okay. I, I was about that's to say, man, I will gladly transfer that over to him if I that, have to. That, wait, I just realized we're 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 in public we rules here. Uh, uh, we love you, Alex Chu. This, we apologize. I, we just don't bit, want you to be right. I, as much as I hate to say it, I would not actually harm him in any way, shape, or form. But, yeah, but we I don't will subject a, him to ridicule. I, I don't have a lawyer here telling me to say this. Yes, there is no lawyer. Thank you, Mr. Epstein. My, Wait, so no, technically he's the smarter one God here. Bad him name. He has a lawyer. Bad name. He does have a lawyer. Shit. Yep. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of that going to get cut. So, 
No, <laughs> I, now I, it, I made the disclaimer. I have to of... cut a couple of things I said. Oh, okay. I, I used the name Epstein like an idiot. <laughs> Let's I thought you were on. doing a bit. I thought I was too, but apparently no. Let's move on. Now, now, it seems that Alex Chu has only increased the number of things his immortality device is capable of over the years. What scope creep? What could that be? Like you do. Oh. For hey, example, yeah. his multi-page website uh, explanation for this device and its function is filled with cute little illustrations depicting his rings, totally real bodily processes. Of and course. you can check out those cute little illustrations. Uh, oh, Oh, okay. this is adorable. Yes. Look, so look at all the, that pink. And I love the wound the, is an explosion. That, 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 first, that first diagram at the top, that's a fucking transistor. He's um, saying the body is a transistor. Mm-hmm. Is this a 311 oh, there reference? There is a transistor, just an amplifier. Uh, <laughs> wound. Well, there, there's like an explosion jamming the vessel. Did it go in? Negative, negative. It just impacted on the surface. Contaminated body parts. I feel bad being on this site. Strong magnets. Weak magnets are loose. They tight. don't stick together. This so, is uh <laughs> what I love the two magnets says, coming together. That's yeah. very mm-hmm. Dragon Ball says, Z. Cells form into a straight line, but those just will like look like googly eyes to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, for example, on the first of several pages, Alex claims the following. Now back to your fingers. Your fingers are the transistors of your body. Each finger affects a certain part of your body. If you allow energy to flow from one finger to the other finger, the energy which travel between the two fingers turned on a larger amount of energy. The larger amount of energy is so powerful, it affects each cell of your body. It only works well on the small fingers. I'm not done, motherfucker. <laughs> Hold on, I was going to say... I've seen video of this before. It's Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> okay, so he, he this is a little side. Only works well on the small fingers. I got close to no result from the other fingers. This motherfucker got results on the small ones? So he continues. The powerful energy which flows through your entire body as it cures damaged cells is not directly emitted from the two tiny magnetic rings. The powerful energy you have experienced is the energy amplified by the tiny energy which comes from the rings. This powerful energy helps your body reheal, which means your wounds, scars, and among other damaged cells will reheal. I just looked over, and Mike how, is like straight up face palming like Picard. How is he measuring these results? Because he, he says he says he got no results on the big fingers, but <laughs> results on the little ones. How is he measuring these results? We, Mike, is what's the so criteria? Hurt. I was I was just waiting for this end. I was gonna be like, I'm sorry, I'm dead now. But Mike has actually fucking died. But the, here's the thing. He contradicts himself several times. He says that the energy does not come from the two tiny magnetic rings. But, but in the comes. very next fucking sentence, he says the energy amplified by the tiny energy which came from the fucking rings. Well, the, I mean, that, that I don't think that's too contradictory because he's saying it, it oh, modifies the energy of the body. Anything he says. I'm not. I'm, I'm defending his little bit of logic there that it hurt to he say. He says that the, ring, the rings do not project, uh, they do not project energy, but then in the next sentence, he says well, that there's energy coming from the rings. Well, so he... Uh, I, I, I guess what he meant to say is that what the fuck Thank is going you for on? listening. What, no. what he meant to say is the healing energy doesn't come I from the rings. I don't fucking know what he meant to say, Mike. But it doesn't mean a goddamn thing. I, well, I, unfortunately, it, I understand, I think, what he's trying to say, but it's still wrong. If that makes any uh, sense. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but but so, he measured results. What were well, the results? Well, well, well Mike, here, I'm going to give you my understanding of what tingles. this is, and you tell me. You tell me if I'm getting this, okay? okay. So, oh, you sound so broken, my friend. <laughs> you yes. don't see him. His head is down in his hands. So, <laughs> as I understand it, 
He is misreading bioelectricity and conflating it with theories of magnetism and connecting it to some principles of chakras and energy lines associated with some ancient healing beliefs. Essentially, he proposes a ridiculous, impossible version of pulsed electromagnetic, mag electromagnetic therapy. Yeah, I mean, yes, he definitely seems to believe there's like an energy in the body he's manipulating. Now... Here's the thing. Going from the principles of the chakras, mm -hmm. where do you start when you're uh, opening your chakras? You start with your root chakra, which means you need to stick the rings up your ass. So you should have made a magnetic butt plug. Yes. And that would open your chakras gradually all the way up to your head. And then you put on Don't the... give him uh, ideas. The he will make, no, he will make the electric butt plug. You will do it. The magnetic I, hat. Kevin, I found our, our, our way in. It's through the butt. <gasps> oh, my God. You're right. Oh, buddy. This is now a cult. <laughs> I need, way a, in is through the I need butt. a 3D print some silicone molds. <laughs> and put some magnets in them we can get from Michael's. No, no, Amazon. Oh, no, no, I'm AliExpress. Not AliExpress, yes. All right. Okay. So Here we go. 50 pounds for like three bucks. Oh, okay. So, David, what else have you got? But hey, that is not all. Oh, I have another one for you. you. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Quote, my invention allows the user to cure old wounds and scars to free the jammed circulation of the body. Without no. eternal life device, old wounds and scars do not heal back 100% to their original structures. <sighs> Only with the eternal life device can a man one day have his body healed itself back to perfect. Uh, okay, okay. This is, this is a call to action. I want every artist from Marvel Comics to start drawing Wolverine with these rings on at all times. Well, he's already coated in animantium. If you coat a bone in animantium, isn't that technically a ring because okay. it's surrounding he the bone? He is a but it's living not magnetic. Alex Chu. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Maybe Magneto rips the adamantium out of well, Wolverine that, all the fucking not, time. Does, yeah, but it, that means it's, it's a uh, magnet-affected you know, it's a metal that's affected by magnetism, but doesn't have its own inherent magnetism. Okay, so, see. So if you stick Wolverine in a microwave, would it cause the microwave to explode? Well, it would yeah, cook it's him it's very metal, thoroughly. If I stick aluminum in a microwave, it's still going to be bad, but Look, aluminum's not attracted okay. to magnets. I want to point okay. out that Mike was so defeated by the last <laughs> segment that my joke about Wolverine and healing with these rings has caused him to just latch on and be like, no, your science is wrong. I'm just saying. No, I didn't. I wasn't the one that said that. that oh God damn! Let's, well, I'm not done yet. I still got more of this quote oh, to read. God, I'm I think, sorry. I think, I think Wolverine should wear the foot ones, though. I agree. Wolverine with Kenoki foot pads would be awful. <laughs> no, no, I mean the Alex Chu foot clamps. Oh, oh no! I just clamps. I don't want to know what's at the bottom of Wolverine's feet. Uh, yeah. Okay. No. They're probably okay. Hairy. Quote. <laughs> With a perfect body, you are supposed to look extraordinary beautiful. Again, I'm just reading it yep, as it's yeah, written. Nope, it, just go not, for not, it. Not, uh, not at all. Nope. No consideration for <laughs> nope. no cultural differences in beauty or anything. Nope. Yep. Your eyes are clear. Your arms and legs are strong. Your organs function great. Your uh, IQ that, will break 180. What? You I, are to be young and beautiful forever. Double exclamation point. Ow, you must make your body perfect. No damage or close to no damage in order to become the super race. Uh, <laughs> what? Did he just ha channel Hitler? And this is where I plant a huge <laughs> fucking red flag in all of this. <laughs> um, but, but, hold on, back up. So, your organs function great. How, how is that beautiful? That's like, beautiful, that, man. When, I've got a beautiful spleen. When I, when you I, I, fuck if you're yourself. not rotting from the inside, I'm what? assuming that's probably good for your complexion. When, when I, I have the most stunningly beautiful colon you've ever seen. Just say, when I, when I look at, you know, pornography of beautiful people, I think, wow, they have great organs. I don't know. You man, ever look at Goatsy? must be fucking great because she is really peeing on that dude. <laughs> That is not what I was expecting. Oh, my God. You ever actually seen the inside of your colon, by the way? 
No. Just me? I can't okay. reach my Let's head Let's move there. on. <laughs> no, uh, I had some photos taken. Uh, oh, my guy photos? in an alley. <laughs> yes. No, <laughs> I, camera, I had an endoscopy done, and mm-hmm. uh, they, sure. they had what, a camera. I, that's what the guy said it was. But I'm not going to lie. They had two cameras, and I was finger cuffs, and I got Wait. to keep the photos, and it's Kevin. very pink and squishy. So, so they went from both ends? Yep. Did they plant a little tiny railroad spike in the middle? No, but, you know, nope, but they did high five. Ah, well, nice. You know, and what I appreciate is now everybody knows about Kevin's colon. You're goddamn right. In fact, uh, you know what? I had a uh, had a diesel motor installed, and now it's a semicolon. Uh, <laughs> hey! uh, that's awful. I hate you. I'm going to shit on <laughs> I hate guess. you. <laughs> going to kill some fucking younglings. Okay. okay. Yeah, you, do, you do that, Annie. <laughs> So, yeah, obviously, red flag here, the mention of the Super Race. Um, Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, so while this has been fun overall, this is one of the many questionable statements and phrasings he makes on his website. Yeah, so, like, are the rings some kind of final solution, or... So, we're going to have to talk about some of his political and racial views another time because we still have a lot to cover uh, regarding these fucking plastic rings. Oh uh, yeah, that's that's a lighter episode. Let's keep moving. Yeah, yeah, that that's uh that's going to be a light and breezy one for us. So, um another fun bit, quote, cells act like magnets for they are magnets themselves. Again, split the word into two. <laughs> the earliest type of animals are all worm-like long and straight animals because a cell has north and south pole just like a magnet it attracts to other a o h e r yeah other cells <laughs> other cells north or south pole with this attraction a group of cells form into a single straight line the uh, earliest uh, animals were formed that way mike I, hold on hold on mike that's me <laughs> that's kevin but i'm still I'm, I'm <laughs> keep, keep oh going, God. man. Keep going. If, if magnetic energy is further applied to animal body in the correct polarity, it will make the body animal body more stronger and denser. Below is a picture of disorganized. Or I'm sorry, disordered weak cells. Cholesterol easily jams in this kind of cell body. So, just to point right out, now. point out how distressed I was earlier that that. Cells are like magnets. Shit, I mm-hmm. I couldn't even wrap my brain around a a retort for that. I I want to point out that if cells are like magnets and they have north and south and blah blah blah, long okay, then the worm is the perfect animal. Yeah, why why did we become you why know, why would we get these fucked up meat bodies with bad backs? Why? Right, why? That, that's why, Kevin, because we aren't because worms. I yeah, shouldn't we be worms though? Well, no, we 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 strayed from the perfect evolution. Of we have wormism. strayed from God's path. Thing, I have my wife call me a worm all the time, so I am technically a worm. So. Yeah, but don't you ask her to do that? Yes. Okay. So, well, it's that's a thing. different. <laughs> Anyway, so Mike, cells, just doing a sanity check on you here. How so, you doing, buddy? So cells act like magnets, eh? I've <laughs> never heard that before, ever, anywhere. I now, now, Mike, are you okay? We're, we're atoms, checking. No, because atoms have you know a magnetic polarity. Yes, but the cells themselves. In fact, the the forming long straight lines. That's not true either. Some of the the earliest like speculated uh, multi cell organisms were just like clumps of cells, like all over. Yeah. In fact, the reason we became multicellular organisms is suspected that these clumps kind of became these hollow. Uh, what is that thing called? The the ocean. It's like it's like basically like a balloon in the ocean. It's just a this certain type of uh, single-celled organism, but they arrange themselves into a ball that's hollow in the middle. Um, blast, Bubbles? Blast something. Blastules? Something. I can't remember. But yeah, Metroids? it's... They're, they're kind of faintly... <laughs> Metroids! Yeah. Yeah. They're kind of faintly green, and they're, they just, you know, they form that way, and it's, it's theorized that that's basically how... You know the transition from single cell to multicellular organisms happened. 
I never think Alex Chu would explain that. I yeah. never wanted to do acid before this episode, <laughs> um, but here we are. But so so even that's wrong. Yeah. Can we? So <sighs> so this idea of cell magnetism is also used by Chu to explain wrinkles. I knew this was going to get stupider. As they are simply disordered cells caused by the slowing of blood flow, which results in the jamming of cholesterol, and as the cholesterol piles up, the body ages in that spot. That's not how any of this fucking works, goddammit! <laughs> that has nothing to do with the, with the uh, deterioration of collagen or anything, no. Shut the fuck up, nothing means anything anymore, Mike. <laughs> The immortality rings can cure everything from old scars and wrinkles to bloodshot eyes, reduction of fat, and disfiguration from being hit in the face. <laughs> you heard it, folks. Hit Alex Chu in the face. It won't phase him. Look. And I, 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 the disfiguration it'll, from it'll, being hit in the face is from his website. It, it'll, okay. it'll phase him, but he'll be able to heal Look, like Wolverine. You know what? Fuck it. Fuck religion. This this is my religion now. Alex Chu's <laughs> immortality rings. Worship it at the church of your choice. This is what like, this honestly, is what I believe now. Like honestly, after spending so much time reading about this guy, he is my muse. I I like, know that the insane bullshit I, that he is able to get away with. I understand. I I completely understand because it's like he's happier than we'll ever be. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. he has that clarity of conviction. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. believe in anything this strongly. Now, note that none of these claims are backed by research or photographs. These are all just MS Paint drawings. And why bad, wouldn't they be? Bad MS Paint drawings, too, I must why, why wouldn't they be? Oh, the energy in that magnet one, where the two magnets are coming together, I think oh, that's pretty sick. I no, think that, a is, good job that is pretty badass. It is a straight-up like Goku versus Vegeta panel. So, this series of web pages goes on for a long time, and at multiple points he writes, This is how my device actually works. <laughs> this is what Scientologists actually believe. So, he every time he adds something new to it, he doesn't go back and correct the old stuff. He just says, This is how my device actually works. The whole thing feels like he's writing it on the fly and free associating pseudoscience and a misunderstanding of biological principles, stitching them into this nightmare. <laughs> this just sounds like he's trying to defend himself from the voices in his fucking head. And, and, and also, where's, what's his test criteria? Because he says he tests uh, the shit. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. I want you to know what his customers <laughs> say. Mike is banging his head on the desk. No, that's, that's what you fist, just heard. Okay. Well, All right. Well, okay. We're going to give you your proof right now. Yeah. On his webpage, proof.html. It has <laughs> you covered. Oh, oh, thank God. <laughs> okay. So he has some written testimonials for his products and YouTube videos recorded by his fans. Quote. Uh, it, there's no quotes around the word fans in this, David. What the fuck? <laughs> Uh, no, because he has legitimate fans. We'll talk about that. Okay. Um, he also has a YouTube channel to talk about his views and theories. We'll get to that another time, but he uses his YouTube channel as a way to showcase his unaging appearance. Um. Now, he assumes that his most compelling evidence is himself, as the page is filled with photos of him over the years. The problem is, is that these photos show a man who is aging, which is something that is not supposed to be possible with the immortality device. That being said, he has a good bone structure, but his hair is progressively thinning out and his hairline does recede noticeably. But what about his kidneys? That's a good question. I'm sure his kidneys are fine. I'm willing to wager he has the organs of a man half his age. Yeah, in, he harvested in a them bucket. himself. Yeah, I was going to say, in a bucket, in the uh, garage. Uh, Mike apparently just looked up the photos. No, I just went to his uh, his YouTube page. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. His YouTube page. Um, why is there a very large red flag with a white circle with a <gasps> oh, black, you saw that? black symbol in the middle? Oh, you we're saw the Nazi the flag. Future, baby. That is a future topic. That's, we'll, we'll come back to that shit, but, Mike. I my, saw that. But looking at him, yeah, he, he's, you know, in the... Uh, he's in his 40s. The G... The, uh, not G4. What was it before? The... the, 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 today, the uh, today... No, no. The, uh, the Comedy Central show. The... 
Daily Today's Show. Daily Show. That's it. In the Daily Show, yeah, he looks like a you know young young twenties, you know, mm-hmm. dude. And you hear, yeah, he's in his forties, mm-hmm. and now he looks like us. Yeah, I mean, he he is deaf. Like if he invented this shit in ninety nine, you know, he has not been using it every day. <laughs> right, you forget. Um, your mind oh, is yeah. taken up by okay. lofty so, thoughts. So, so yeah. So, you know, I've recently started taking a uh, omeprazole because I have like acid reflux. I don't remember to take that shit every day. Like I forgot nope. to take it today. I forgot to take it yesterday. I haven't taken it in a week, and so, I didn't realize it all burped, and it felt like burning. So, so yeah, yeah. He's especially just after you have a piece of pizza. And, yes. And if his stuff is so good, if you forget it for one or two nights a week. It just fucks everything up. Oh, yeah. It's like the picture of Dorian Gray. (laughs) (laughs) Except he is the picture. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Is that? Oh, so I moused over the like latest video and I just saw a raised shirt. I thought it was his butt at first, but it was his stomach. Oh, Mm -hmm. God. He's like raising his shirt up and like Uh. pointing at his stomach. But as you scroll down, you'll see that he has several videos on incest. Oh, shut up. Up. Shut, but, up. But, you know, at first, shut up. Shut up. At first, I thought he was like pointing at his butthole. I mean, literally, because you see his belt and his shirt pulled up. And- the original immortality ring. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, we, what? yeah. Can, the chakra. Can, let's let's so, go with so, the chakra. So, you know, I'm not going God. to like dig too much into the testimonials here because ultimately these are either made up by Chu or they're sick people who have been manipulated by him. That is the saddest goddamn thing we've said all night. Yeah, he, he's a man of many grifts. So I do want to circle back on two things. One thing that we brought up earlier was his views on Taiwanese heritage. Okay, this is going to get fun. Oh, boy. I, uh, <laughs> I'm going to quote something from his website. Quote, of course I am you not are. a Taiwanese. I am Chinese. And I wish China will one day take Taiwan back peacefully or by force at any cost, exclamation point. A Taiwanese who does not consider himself to be Chinese does not deserve to become immortal. So if that's you, my product is not for you. That's hardcore as shit. So, so yeah, he, he's a total author, uh, 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 authoritarian. Well, now, before uh, you call him a Chinese nationalist, watch out. Mm -hmm. Because on that same page, he hits us with this. Mm -hmm. Quote, I hate Chinese Confucius's philosophy the most. Confucius said, there is a golden house in a book. There is also beautiful woman in a book. He means if you study, you get rich. I don't like his philosophy. All Confucius knows is money. I say that there is nothing but benefit to mankind in a book. Americans use book to build heaven. Chinese use books as tools to get rich quick. They laugh at you if you perceive new discoveries or ideas. That's why they will never improve. Chinese are too practical. When you talk about investing in new technologies, Chinese would back out. They rather open a Chinese restaurant than investing them in some new technology that would change the world. But realize the richest people on earth are still the most inventive people, the Americans. Bill Gates wouldn't say, let's open up Chinese restaurants everywhere. No. He said, I dream that one day every house will have a computer and through computers there will be a huge network. No wonder why he has ninety billion. So that's a lot. So uh, so I think I think he pitched his idea to uh Shark so, Tank? No, to uh some Chinese companies and they like shot him down. Uh yeah. Also, David, you cut out at one point on what may be my favorite quote where it says hack no. Uh huh. Instead of no. heck, hack no. Mm-hmm. That is a uh, that's a lot to unpack. Like I, I hope so, like most of the audio is there oh, because oh, that no, was very intense there. to read. That was and all very there uncomfortable. except for hack. Yeah, that's uh, it was very uncomfortable. I can imagine. Um, mm-hmm. It was uncomfortable listening to it. <laughs> yes. Um. So. You know, there's a lot going on here, and there's something that you'll see on his website where there's this tendency where he takes issue with his own facial features and praises himself the more white he appears. There is way too Uh. much to unpack here, but we will cover his views on race, world government, and religion in the future. Motherfucker, we better. Yeah, there's, there's so much to this guy. So, secondly... 
I just want to touch on the Orientalist nature of Chu's whole grift. So, namely, his website is coded with references to Eastern philosophy, and his attitude towards China and Chinese philosophy is very much driven by what he can use or not. Mm -hmm. If China gives him some sort of value in his his thing that he's doing, Uh he's all for it. But But if if it's not, not, fuck it. Yeah. But the other thing that is very much... uh, uh, the, the other thing that he uses very much is elements of like far eastern belief in healing and repackages them as pseudoscience garbage with magnets while simultaneously disparaging the culture from which these beliefs originate oh wow which is even stranger giving uh, given his taiwanese background and what appears to be like almost chinese nationalism by not but not quite and I didn't even get to the combination Chinese flag with Nazi style eagle imagery on the website. Yeah, no, that was. Uh, it, l- let's not forget that he he practices sort of a Jewish faith here. Um, this is uh, Mike. You you had a good analogy for that, didn't you? What was that? The you know the whole thing where he's got the Nazi flag with the Chinese flag in it, and he's. A practicing Jew, and you had an analogy for oh, that. God, I don't remember, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, this episode has completely baked both of our well, brains. It's yeah. it's definitely like oh, I remember you said it was like uh, somebody said it was like cockroaches praising Ray oh, as yeah, their Lord right. and Savior. In that, it's just really weird. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're, we're getting to the end here. So, oh, yay! Yeah, like, I, I'm sorry I put you no, guys through this. No, 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 it's but. fine. This is the best comedy. So, so here, here's the question. Does he believe in what he's peddling? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I, I mean, you, I don't think you, I mean, he, like I said, I did, I don't know how much money he's making now, but, you know, back in the beginning, he was only charging, admittedly, it was 99 and 1689 or whatever was a lot yeah. more money, but still, but, that's still like 50 bucks or something. I mean, I, I don't, you I'm, know. I'm going to tell you something, man. The best con man is the one that actually believes what he's selling. Oh, yeah. Or that's so, like worst, depending on what you're totally be- think he believes this. Yeah, see, I'm I'm not sure. I feel like there is a genuine belief in what he sells, given his conviction and longevity. But you know he he's been doing this for over two decades. But you think you would sometimes think sometimes yeah like some doubt would start creeping mm-hmm. in when he's seeing the lack right. of results. No, no 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 no. He sees himself every day and yeah, like you don't see the changes until like one day you look in the mirror and you're like, I'm old. And yeah. and also he doesn't you know looking at the YouTube stuff he doesn't look you know bad so he probably yeah. gets a lot of stuff like i do which is like you know people find out how old i am and they're like oh yeah. you look you don't look I that old i never would have known you were 80 if you hadn't yeah. told me mike yeah exactly <laughs> no i mean he does have a hell of a jawline he does yeah so so he probably gets that a lot and it kind of you know at you know adds into this whole thing like oh i didn't know you don't look 47 you look like you're 32 sure you know, but 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 it's the thing, it's like he's been going at this for a long time. He probably believes in it to a degree, but also like I recognize the tactics and tricks of a con man in all of yeah. this. Sure. I will <sighs> Yes, he's a con man, but he's also like uh it's a hustle. Yeah. So, you know, I, I just I would like to end this episode by reading some Amazon reviews of his <laughs> immortality rings. <laughs> Um, much like a Marvel Studios film, Alex Chu will return in another episode of the podcast. Or James Bond. Or James Bond, but no, Marvel's more hip and trendy right now. Oh, yeah, it's true. Also, they don't drink that much, uh, and don't smoke that much, so yeah. Yeah. So, I'm I'm just gonna go ahead and read some of these Amazon reviews. We ready for this? Absolutely. Let's do it. One star. Title. (laughs) Hard plastic not practical to wear. Quote. Extremely uncomfortable to wear. Can't say for sure they even do anything. Who would have thought? One star. Title. Rip off. Comment. Rip off. Stupid. Yep. One star. Title. They don't work. I didn't live forever. I want my money back. (laughs) 
Wow. No, <laughs> oh, I love the trolls. God bless the trolls. So I bought these rings and wore them every day. Unfortunately, they do not work as advertised because I recently died. I want my money back. <laughs> so talking about the, the comfort thing. So I did notice a some pictures of the rings on the website, which uh, yeah, very grainy black and white. He must have like they must still be the same pictures he probably took in like mm-hmm. like the early nineties or maybe the early two thousands with like one of those Sony Mavica one of the he's first probably digital still cameras. Working through, he's probably still working through his original stock, you know what I yeah. mean? Oh yeah. But but no. no the but the the pictures themselves like so yeah. I don't know Kevin's slightly familiar with like the the gubbins of a car. I don't know about you, David, mm. but uh, they look like plastic hose clamps. They do. Like, and I think what it is is he made the rings out of hose clamps with a magnet inside. Well, well they're kind of on the outside, but they are they. Yeah, I d- I saw them earlier today, and I've tried but, not to think about this for the rest but of the they, day. They they they're yeah they they don't look like they'd be comfortable at all. No, like, no, God, no. Because they're just like little clicky, ratcheting hose clamp things that, Mm -hmm. you know, you adjust for size. Now, David... I I got another fun one for you. You you got another one star, yeah. Yes. One star. Title. Help. I am in pain. (laughs) (laughs) Comment. I really love the ring. Fit well, and for the past 10 years, I have worn it faithfully. No aging at all. The problem is, I was hit by a car a month ago. The ring melded with my bone. I c- now I can't die. I am in so much pain. Please help me, Mr. Chu. How do I stop the immortality your ring has brought? I no longer want to be immortal, but please help me find some peace. <laughs> I'm sorry. The trolls are... God bless the trolls. Right. The trolls are great, but here, here, here's the thing. Three-star reviews are hilarious to me because, statistically speaking, people are more prone to go for the extremes in rating, like ones or five. So three stars implies that they felt something worked, but it just wasn't enough? I, I will say, when I when I look at Amazon reviews, I definitely try to see what the, the middle-of-the-road people are saying mm-hmm. about it. You know. Yeah. Well, you know what the middle of the road people remind me of? The three star reviews? Hmm. You remember how, like, uh, on MTV, they would do the call in polls where you could call in and vote yes, no, or no opinion? It's like you spent 95 cents a minute to let them know you had no fucking feeling one way or the other. Yeah. I mean, that kind of, you know, that makes sense because that costs you something. Yeah. But, you know,. But if still, if I'm, if I'm like reviewing, you know, some crap I bought off Amazon, and it's not right. like I the mean, best thing. Yeah, but still, I mean, what is it? I, we're gonna find out. But like, I just picture a three star review being, and I'm kind of immortal. Well, I'm just yeah, talking it, about things in general. But you know, just I, I think that like the public, largely as a whole, just statistically, is more likely to go for like the one meh. or the five. So the threes always stand out to me because yeah, no, the it brings up a lot of really questions. Really fun, yes. Yeah. So here we go. Three stars. Title. Not sure about weight loss, but I like them. Oh, boy. Quote, I read about these in Kevin Trudeau's book and thought I would give them a try. I do, quote, feel, end quote, something happening, which I did not feel anything at first, but I have not lost a lot of weight using them. They do seem to be helping with chi. As, as I notice, the days when I've worn them the night before seem to go much easier and better for me. They are, quote, clunky feeling on the hand, and the stronger ones can pull a magnet out. They are so strong if you put your hands too close together. I would recommend starting with the weaker ones first. <laughs> so putting your hands together can, in fact, break the immortality rings. Well, yeah, you're looking at the design, there's just the magnets are held aren't really held in very well it looks I like i just i love the cheat you know they it, like just kind of slide it in. sounds like they're just experiencing the confidence of someone that knows they went to bed with hose clamps on <laughs> the next okay. day here we go three stars title uncomfortable quote uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great and now I have a couple five stars for you, and then we're going to be done. Oh, so, good. Okay. 
Five stars. Title, they work. Three exclamation points. Quote, these rings work. I had a partial back injury from squatting weights. I wore them last night while I slept. I slept and my back feels a lot better overnight. I, uh... Usually it takes long, a, a bit longer to heal like that. Plus, I look a lot younger than I am. Well, that is Alex Chu right yeah, there. Yeah, the, the separating over. Yeah, it's the, totally his writing that style. Is, that is him I've only using been lo- a sock puppet. I've only been looking at his writing style for, you know, with for the first time in, you know, 15 years, just tonight. And I can recognize that already. <laughs> Yeah, no, that is Alex G right there. And then one last five-star review. Okay. Five stars. Title, great product. Quote, this product is amazing. I'm immortal now. I bleed no more. There is no limit to the use this product has. This is, again, Alex. Uh, I don't know. That that seems to flow a little better than Alex's writing. No, all it means is that he remembered how to use periods. He he Mm. got the Grammarly app. Yeah. No, he he used the autocorrect. You, you you can't doubt you know discount the fact that there's going to be true believers. I I, yeah. I want to so bad. I mean, so, uh, unfortunately, any stupid bullcrap you come up with, there's going to be some true believers. This is really we come, look. We can sit here and brainstorm the dumbest shit ever, and someone would be like, "That's my jam. I like that." I have developed That's a tumor new, in the front of my fucking head, and I'm naming it Alex Jude. That's my new worldview. Yep. So how, how does this compare to Time Cube? This is so much worse than Time Cube. Um, because right, it's, this guy is still alive, and there's more. Well, it's oh, like the more. Time Cube that keeps on giving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I, I've got a list of just topic after the giving, topic. The giving chew. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's the giving so, Kino Key. So, so, uh... You missed that joke, the giving yeah, Kino I, Key. Yeah, I heard that, and I get it. Okay. I got it. Oh, I got it. You just uh, didn't like it. No. Okay. So one of the videos on his uh, YouTube channel, he, he made his own version of the Imperial March. Yes, that's one of his bizarre claims about his past, because apparently oh, no. as a six-year-old, he wrote the Imperial March and John Williams stole it. Of course, of course. That's <sighs> of that's course. how it always is. There's always but, some, I did this amazing thing. But, I am the amazing song boy. So, but here's the thing. So at first it plays the, the, you know, John Williams version, and then it goes into his version. It's Which such sucks, a, by the it's way. a musical train wreck. Yes. It's mm. discordant. Is, and it, is it on a piano Saurus? No. Then I don't believe he wrote it at six. It, well, no, this is something, this is recent. This is a, mm-hmm. uh, you know, he he says he he right. composed a score using Muse Score software. Well, great for him. Yeah, but it's we'll, we'll, I, it's awful. Oh, yeah. God, it is so terrible. Like, I yeah, we should we should it. include that in the the notes. Yeah, here's the thing. That should be our outro. Could, could we play it? Yeah. Could we okay, play that'll it? we'll go out on that instead of our normal outro music. Oh, Jesus Christ, we're gonna lose so many subscribers. I, yeah, well, <laughs> that you know, you made it to the end, so fuck you. We have your two hours already. Um, it's like if John Williams like had a stroke. W- would know was like having diarrhea <laughs> on the toilet and tried to write music at the same time. I, you know, that reminds me. I described a butthole surfer song as the noise your stomach makes right before you have like a massive <laughs> diarrheal explosion. <laughs> um, but I, I, I really thought that Time Cube or. David Icke was going to win the uh, Golden Enrique this year, but um, well, are we going? We're going like for our seasons for that. Yeah, I so think not calendar year. I think uh, after May we're going to go into season two. Okay, and uh, this is it's pretty close. It's pretty close, but I'm really leaning toward Alex Chu right now because mm. David, mm. give us a list of some of our future topics real quick. So okay, that, so, uh, so Mike I will just, understand. Yeah. So I, I these are just like my rough notes. I have the cell realignment machine. Oh, which well, sounds like a Dr. Seuss book. The gorgeous pill. <laughs> gorgeous Super stuff. I Ching. Super I Ching. Is that like Alex's, an iPad? Mm-hmm. 
Yes, the uh, I Ching. It, it's his religious philosophy. Yes, oh, he has God. an entire section devoted to his religious oh, philosophy. God. Oh, fuck me, running yes. with guns. Alex's predictions of the future. So yeah, I saw oh, one of his uh, YouTube videos where uh, he pr- prophetic dream Russia will use nuclear weapons early 2023. So apparently he has prophetic dreams. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, I think that's reading the newspaper and making a guess. Well, no, the no, World she's talking about a real dream. Plan. Wait, what was that, David? The World Corporation Plan. Oh boy. Alex choose new Darwinism. If you're ugly, you die. You upgrade our Darwinism. Mm-hmm. Alex choose space station. Quote space station. Quote space station. That's Alex choose views on God. Oh, oh boy. that's quite a thing. Alex oh, no. chew on women, specifically yeah, no. strippers. <laughs> oh god damn it! Fuck. Alex slides into the alt right. Can he slide on like the crocodile mile at least? No nationalist Chinese, but thinks communism is the Antichrist. Wait, what? Alex Chu on incest porn and pedophilia. Good night, everybody. I, I, I'm afraid to know which way he leans in that one. I oh that, boy. The, so that's some of the but, stuff I got planned for you guys. But it's your kid. <laughs> Fuck. If it's, if it's and the like, immortality rings repair trauma. Yeah, uh, some I gross bio truth shit, I bet. I, and the bad thing is I still want to get the rings and just try them and see what Kevin, happens. You could I'll, probably I'll, get some rings from him. Kevin, I, I'll make you some if you really want that. I, he yeah, actually but they provides the instructions to make them yourself. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes, wow. he actually has the instructions. Okay, you that on his says, website, he will provide and, them. That and, says and true believer right slightly, there. Slightly to his credit, like in his video thing it says buy my rings at you know his website the price is negotiable wow okay so, um i'm gonna give him a lot of credit for like believing his own for huffing his own farts so yeah so there's alexchu.com but his current website apparently is live much longer.com that's a one he also David had mentioned, yeah. live forever now I don't uh, want he, to. He had a bunch of immortality related URLs. Does he have a killmenow.com where he sells like sure. immortality handguns or any kind of like thing that'll take me out of the world? Because uh, holy shit. Oh, yeah, there's this. I've been waiting to do this episode. Like, I, know I, I wanted you have. to do Dancing Plague for a long time. I'm so happy I did Dancing Plague, but this was one of those that I'm like. No, I have to do you this know, fucking episode. When you said internet snake oil, I was like, this will be a fun hour. And uh, it's been two. <laughs> and I wish I was fucking dead now. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Holy shit. This, this has truly been amazing, though. This is this has well, been on the level of time cube as far as pain goes. <laughs> Um, Deep hurting. Sandstorm. So, <laughs> Mike, what is it? I'm just looking at the page for the gorgeous pill. Oh, no. Okay, we'll talk about that next week. How's that? I definitely want to talk about the gorgeous pill. Well, I uh, I think next week we're doing... Um, we're doing We Can Weird, right? Yeah, but... Yeah, like, and I'll, you know, I'll bring you up can... something on YouTube, but I want to save Gorgeous Pill to tie it to yeah. the cell realignment. Okay, all right. Because okay. I feel like Alex, Alex, I think at this point, he deserves full episodes. Because okay. if you want to take Gorgeous Pill, you need the rings. Oh, God. Because it doesn't so, work by itself. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think that uh, the title for the next Alex Chew episode should be some kind of a play on, uh, like, some kind of Pokemon movie involving Mewtwo. Like Chew Two, Chew <laughs> Squared. I, yeah. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll yeah. figure it out. I, I was gonna go Alex Chew Two Electric Boogaloo, but unfortunately, <sighs> the Boogaloo Boys have ruined it for us. Yeah, so. unfortunately. Well, look. Thank you, everyone, for listening. If you've made it this far, holy crap! Thank you so much. You are amazing, and we really, truly appreciate everything you do. Um, don't forget, you can head over to our website at supernatpod.rocks. You will find links to everything there, including our Patreon, uh, our Discord. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at supernatpod. Uh, you know, until we get taken off for Legos. And uh, again, you can 
head to supernatpod.rocks and find everything you need. Uh, my brain's fried. Right. I guess I'm done. Anybody got any follow-ups real quick before we go? Um, all this talk about like snake oil stuff and you know hoodoo, and we I forgot to mention perineum sunning. Oh yeah, is that the thing where you sun your balls or your the the taint? Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, yeah, so like, that's only tank. like for me. That's a side effect of going to a nude beach once. Like, well, no, you, you gotta. Know, I, I got it crispy. Well, no, you gotta like. <laughs> you gotta go to the nude beach and lay down and spread your legs towards God. Uh, look what you've done! <laughs> look what you've done! Okay, God. Okay, put it away, please. Jesus. I, I, I'll, Jesus I'll, Christ! Yes, Dad. Shut up. Go Close your that. legs. Do something. Jesus, it looks like a zipper. <laughs> I designed that. Fuck. I was drunk. God, you can see the seam. It's like a bad Bigfoot costume down there. <laughs> anyway, thank you for listening. We'll see you next week for some Weekend Weird. David, Mike, as always, thank you for being on the show. It would not be worth it without you. Sure. Oh, Thank you for having me on. <laughs> Yes. Remember, send all complaints to David. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we will talk to you next week. So until then, stay safe and stay frosty. Goodbye. I guess that's it. Everybody's just too fucking numb.